Mustang has 40% picks him to win it overall. Wow. Never happened ever. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, we're getting ready, guys. For 44 years, the United Kennel Club has taken great pride in crowning a world coonhound champion. This year is no different. Tonight, we have 104 dogs that will go out into the field, and 26 will return to move on to tomorrow night's round two. We'll interview all 26 of those teams as they come back. We'll take a look at the challenges they faced and maybe get some insight on who those top three will be. Most importantly of all, we'll get to know who's ready to be this year's world champion. We'll bring it to you all tonight live from our Midnight Mayhem presentation here at the 2022 United Kennel Club World Coonhound Championship. Welcome to the 2022 UKC Coonhound World Championship. I'm J. Paul Jackson, your host here in Dyersburg, Tennessee. Got a really, really exciting night ahead of us here. Uh, this will be the 44th UKC Coonhound Championship, and we're going to bring you Midnight Mayhem, our first event like this this year. It's our inaugural event where we're going to take out these 104 dogs that made it here to the World Championship the 26 cast winners tonight. Of course, to my left here is my co-host and expert analyst. We have a very familiar face to everybody, Mr. Steve Bokholder. Steve, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing awesome, super excited. It's already been an exciting day today. You know, we got to hang out with a lot of these uh, owners and handlers that made it this far. And uh, you can just feel the, or you can just feel it in the air, you know, a lot of excitement leading into tonight. So we're super, super excited. Uh, to unfold it as it comes along. So yeah, exciting, super exciting. Hey man, you know, there's been a lot of electricity in the air here. This event is getting bigger and bigger every year. Uh, tonight we saw literally hundreds of people that came out for the dinner and, and to listen to the cast call and see these dogs off. And the great thing that we're doing this year that's just a little bit different than we did last year is we're bringing you this Midnight Mayhem event so we can showcase those 26 cast winners. To help us along with that, of course, here to my right, I've got Mr. Rick Stretch. Rick, good to see you, brother. Good to see you again, Jay Paul. Yeah. Rick, you're going to be bringing us all the winners. So here in a few minutes when our first cast winners start to roll in, we're going to uh, have Rick come over here to our right. And as these guys come across the red carpet. He's going to spend a few minutes talking to each of these handlers and let us know what it took for them to get here. Yeah, they've, they've won the first round and uh, we're going to be chatting with them over here to the side and uh, and see how their hunt went. We're going to talk to the owners, the handlers, and uh, find out a little bit about their hound and uh, wish them well for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, and for most of these guys, this is a really, really big deal to get to this point. I mean, you're talking about making it here, top 104 dogs. Of course, we had a much bigger field that started trying to qualify, I believe, 480. Over 3,000, well, at the qualifiers, there was over 3,000 entries. Over 3,000 entries. Yeah. So try to get qualified. Now, they're close to 500. Uh, yeah. Last weekend, there was close to 500 dogs right. that competed in seven different locations and hunted down to 104. You know, so uh, it's, a, it's a really, really big deal just to get here. I mean, uh, you know, to make that top 104. But uh, I can tell you winning that first round cast, uh, is is it's a big deal. Oh yeah, it's a really really big deal, you know. So you know the great thing about these guys that win this first round cast too, a lot of them are excited because it's going to be their moment of fame tonight with our midnight right. mayhem broadcast that we've got going on here. When these guys come in, they know that they've made it. 
to Friday night. And for a lot of them, it's their chance to shine. Their families, their friends are watching the event as it unfolds here tonight. So for a lot of these guys, there's bragging rights at stake as well. Um, you've been here before. You've made it through the, the first round. Tell me how you feel when you went get that first cast win here at the Worlds. Well, coming into Thursday, you know, you, you prepare all year or you prepare several months to get ready for the quarterfinals. And getting through the quarterfinals is tough because a lot of times you're hunting at a zone that's got, you know, 100 dogs. I mean, uh, the, the year that I got in, I think there was 140 or 150 and they took like 26 dogs. So you prepare all the whole time to get here. And then you get here on Thursday, the preparation is done. And then it's, you know, you have to have a good dog and you have to have a little bit of luck. And there is some jitters. Anybody that tells you that, oh, I'm not nervous, it's just, not, it's just another hunt, trust me, uh, they're telling that to cover up the jitters that they got. Because when them jitters stop, you're going to quit competing because that's what drives you to come compete at this hunt, that anticipation, that build up the whole day. You know, we was here earlier tonight. This, this place was packed, you know. I mean, several hundred people here. And, uh, you know, as it gets closer to the dark, you know, you're, you're, you're going through preparation in your mind, you know. Uh, you know, making sure that you have all the stuff that you need, you know, as far as the, for the hunt itself, you know, collars charged and all that. And then once you get out into the, the actual hunt starts, for me, it was always when that first dog got struck. You know what I mean? Or the second the dog. Bark. The first bark. Right. And it kind of broke that side of it. And then you kind of go into where the jitters start calming down a little bit. But I can tell you, uh, there's, you're going to see tonight, you're going to hear from a lot of handlers. These casts here, these are... There's no cakewalk cast here. The, a lot of these casts are going to be won in the last half hour. Sure. Know? And so as that hunt builds on, that the jitters kind of calm down a little bit, but then it starts building because especially if you're leading, if you're not leading and you've got to score on another one to get there. So it's exciting, absolutely exciting. Yes, sir. And for me, my first one was always, will always be my special one. But I can tell you, you know, being here a couple different times, it, you know, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's really awesome. Well, and we're about to have that first group come in as well. And we've got some cast winners that are arriving here in the next couple of minutes. But before they get there, Rick, let's, let's talk a little bit. You've been here too about it, but now you're on the up, opposite side yeah, of the, the microphone. Side of yeah. how, how do you feel this about... This is the side I can keep up with. <laughs> <laughs> how do you yeah. feel about being the guy that's getting to greet these guys? I'm excited about them. it. I, I'm telling you, it's, 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 a, it's unbelievable where this sport has come. Ten years ago this weekend, we were in Louisiana, me and my hound, and we won the first round, we won the next round, and we eventually won the final round. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a fun deal for me to be here tonight uh, talking to each one of these guys, because I know one of these guys is going to have the same feeling I had when the hunt was over on Saturday night. It, Steve mentions the, the jitters and the nerves. It will knock you to your knees when you, yeah. when you get this far. And uh, I'm excited for them. Those guys, they've, they've tried hard. They've got a lot of preparation behind them. Some of them have started way back in January, February, when the qualifiers first started, and they've worked their way up to this point. And now tonight, you'll be seeing the 26, assuming they all come in with plus points. Sure. You'll be seeing the 26 top dogs that go into tomorrow night. Yeah, and, and we're going to talk about that scoring in just a minute, but I also want to, to point out for you guys that are following along that perhaps haven't been following the sport for a long time, in case you missed it while ago, this man not only is he our guy tonight introducing these guys as they come in, our cast winners, but Rick has actually won this thing himself. So for a lot of these people that are coming in, especially some of the younger guys that have been in the sport for a while, to have... Rick Stretch, who is a legend in the coonhound world, standing there interviewing. That that's going to add, uh, you know, a special treat for them. It'll be a good time. We uh, Alan asked uh, earlier in the evening when we had the crowd in here, and I even mentioned it. It's the largest crowd I've seen at the World Hunt. Yeah, that, this, that, this that, weekend here. Thursday. And uh, but a show of hands of first time handlers in the World Hunt, and it was phenomenal how many hands went up. Uh, I didn't get a chance to count, but but probably. A third of them were, were maybe new timers here. And um, I'm excited for them guys. I hope a few of them make it through. And I want to I wanna see the, the nervous knees and the, and the quiver in their voices <laughs> as they walk up here. Because it's a show like none other. You know, it's, it, it's, it's unbelievable what's going on here. Yes, but, sir. You know, to your point on the first timers, that just goes to show 
how hard it is to get to this top 104. It's hard, you know. There was probably 30 first timers here out of the 104. Yeah. And and it's 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 a hard hunt to get to, you know. You know, uh, you know, from last year, you know, just talking from last year terms, you know, the three dogs that made the final cast, uh, you know, I know at least one of them competed here, and you know, maybe didn't get through the zones, but there's a lot of good dogs that go home last weekend. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Just it's just and There's that's a lot just of first round picks. Yeah, went home last weekend. That last went home last weekend yeah. because it's really that hard to advance. I mean, you got to have breaks, you got to have a good dog, and you, and it's got to roll your way. So that show to your point, Rick, that was all. I mean, that, to see them first timers here is, is yeah. awesome. Yeah, awesome. and I mean, just to get here, I mean, you had 483 entries at the zones trying to, to vie for arriving here tonight in Dyersburg. And by the way, I want to speak about that just a little bit. I, I got to tell you guys, I'm super excited about having this event here. When the United Kennel Club approached me about working with you guys uh, a couple of years ago, it was mentioned that the 2022 Worlds might be right here in Dyersburg. And, and uh, I know a lot of people in the community uh, and, you know, are not just our houndsmen, but Folks in general that love dogs and that are affiliated in different ways with the United Kennel Club are really excited about having this uh, event here tonight. And I'm excited to welcome you guys here because it's a great area. We have been blessed right now with some fantastic weather. I was scared to death. It was 98 degrees here yeah. yesterday. And, uh, it, you know, we were praying for good weather, and boy, and here it is. And here it is. Oh, you it is awesome drop, tonight. Yeah, drop it Today into the fifties. Oh my goodness, perfect. Yeah. Overnight, so good weather, and I'll tell you what. While you're here, there's a lot to enjoy um, around here and in Dyer County, and I'll encourage all you guys that are in the area come out here tomorrow to the Dyer County Fairgrounds. Of course, on Saturday we'll have our confirmation event. Um, as well, and then Saturday night we will be wrapping up the finals, which we will also be bringing to you live here on the United Kennel Club YouTube channel. Uh, that'll kick off at 8:30 um, on Saturday, Saturday night. night so, yeah. uh, and you mentioned me in here at Dyersburg. It's uh, it's been several years since I've been down here, but when I traveled down Route 45 and 51 last night, and I passed through Clinton, Kentucky area, you know Joe House made a name for himself with these coon hounds. And it just brought back memories coming down that route to get to Dyersburg and uh, passed through that town. Oh, by, and I believe you yes, corrected sir. my pronunciation on it. And I believe that's where Billy Ledbetter was from. Hey, and, yes, sir. And uh, he won the world hunt in 75. Yep. And uh, so a lot of history right around within an hour or so of Dyersburg. And it's been, I don't know, it's been several years since I've competed right here close by. But the hunting here was always awesome. It's flat land, there's lots of coons. Um, it, it's an old man's hunt, really, because it there's no hills here anywhere. Well, no, you're wrong on that. And now, a lot of where you hunted around the Mississippi River bottoms over in Obine County, Lake County, uh, Mr. Ledbetter hunted a whole lot down around um, an area that now we call White's Lake, and it's all flat down there. But when you come up the bluff, uh, there are some pretty formidable hills that some of these guys will be faced with. I live out in a little community called Rowellen. Um, it's funny because last night I walked out and uh, we have some cats around the house and cat food out. <laughs> and there were five or six raccoons in my backyard last night. And I ran into one of my buddies who's guiding tonight. And he said, oh yeah, I'm going, I'm going to be over in the Tiger at WMA, which is in the Rowellen area tonight, guiding events. So for some of these guys, there will be some hills to climb. But overall, in this area, the terrain is very, very forgiving. Um, it's not going to be super difficult. It's certainly not like East Tennessee or Eastern Kentucky. Uh, you know, so it, there's a variety. But the great thing about this area is, guys, you're right, it's very, very rich with game. It has been. Yeah. For many years, you know, you talk about 75 at that time. Uh, I was a, a preteen, and, you know, my, my grandfather and my father competed against Mr. Ledbetter and hunted. And uh, my granddad actually in Troy, Tennessee, which is in Obine County, had a gravel pit where we used to have water races. Oh, okay. Yeah, which used to be a really, really big deal in the event. And so, you know, there are a lot of guys that have been in it for a while around here and a lot of local favorites. And, Speaking of favorites, I'd like to talk a little bit right now about 
something that ended just before uh, we sent our first cast off tonight that's also <laughs> really picked up a lot of steam. This isn't a new thing for us here, but it's definitely uh, quickly becoming a favorite and picking up steam. And that is our pick 'em event. You know, trying to pick the winner of this. A lot of participation this year. Steve, tell us about that and how it unfolded. Well, absolutely. So they, a few years ago, they started a pick'em contest where you could, uh, once the 104 dogs was determined, uh, you could pick five dogs um, and an alternate six dog. Uh, I think if you was, um, you could pick up to six dogs, but most people would pick five and it's based off of a point system. And so what happens is, is if you pick a dog uh, that wins its cast this first round, advancing past the first round, you get a point. Then the points increase every round after that. And this gets very, this gets very competitive. You know, this a lot of times comes down to uh, Saturday night's cast. And uh, so, you know, if they advance past the second round, they get five points. If they advance past the third round, it's 10 points. And if you eventually pick the, the winner, it's 20 points. So somebody could, could pick the winner and maybe get three other picks wrong and come from behind and seal this deal up on Saturday night. So there's a lot of chatter on, on social media and stuff, and they kind of keep it updated and know where they're at. And so it's a, it's a really fun contest. And you win a little prize at the end of the year, but I can tell you for us personally, uh, uh, for us personally, uh, it's, a, uh, it, it, it's a bragging right. You know, it, it's a bragging right. And uh, this year... Um, the, the I can we'll give you guys a list. Yeah, you of can the, see on the graphic. You, you can right see on the graphic top on six dogs, top picks. six dogs that have been picked uh, to you know to win this. Yeah. So and I know um, I had heard earlier, uh, and I can't verify this to be you know true. I mean I don't have a full verification on it, but uh, I think the little bit of money dog got like forty percent of people picked him to win this thing. So. Uh, he, uh, that's going to be a, a weight to carry for him. So, so no doubt, no doubt. And you of know, course, but you yeah, know, we've got a tie down there also, and it's actually there's a tie there for fifth place. Five and six are in a tie, and you know you do finally see one uh, hometown favorite there. You know the, the interesting thing to me looking at this graphic is, of course, we, you know we see the breed TW. For those of you out there who are watching, might not know. Uh, I'm pretty much sure everybody watching does. That's Tring Walker and. And they've been pretty dominant as far as the number of dogs making it. But we've also got a crossbreed in there tied at, at number five. Yep. Um, and also, the girls are dominating in the pick -em right now, two to one. Yeah, and i tell you something. The, uh, as you can see, the, uh, the sundown dog, he, was, he won Autumn Oaks two years ago. Yep. So, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's going to be he's gonna be a handful this weekend. He's, he's, you know, so, yeah, a lot of good dogs on there for sure. Absolutely. So let me put you guys on the spot for a second. We're looking at this graphic here, these six dogs. If you had to pick one of the six, let's start with you, Rick. Who's your pick out of these six? I think they've got one and two pretty close right there. That, 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 those are either one of those two right there would be no surprise at all. Um, sundown, uh, like Steve said, uh, won the uh, national grand night champion two years ago. His his call name is Apollo. Yeah. And uh, he's owned by John Strickland and Ashley Oxidine and and a few others. And uh, he's handled tonight. I think Judas is hunting him. And they yeah. they've been on a little bit of a roll with yeah. him here. Absolutely. Um, uh, Cody Carter's hunting Cookie, and, and they've they, been on a they've big time been, roll. I mean, they've they, been tearing everything up. Yeah. They they beat everybody. They draw. Yeah, at, some point, <laughs> at some point, but uh, but you got Kevin Cable up there at the top there with that little bit of money dog, and uh, he's probably a grand. Is it a male or a female? Male. He's, a male. he's, a male. Uh, he's yeah. probably a grandson of uh, Big D, who won the World Hunt here in two thousand nine. Well, luckily for you, we have our unofficial statistician looking through. We may be able to have that here for you just a second. Yeah, and I can. Um, I believe he was out of. Uh, we'll go to it. If he's out of big money, he he, he's actually out of he's out of uh, money maxed out. Maxed out, so, so he would be a great great grandson. Yeah, yeah. 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 Of which course, is, big which, money was great sire. Yeah, I mean, that big yeah. money dog has well, produced you a know, lot of champions. You know, there there's several there's several stud dogs here this weekend, or there's several dogs here this weekend that have have multiple pups in this in this top 104. Yeah. So, and we're going to touch uh, on that a little exactly, bit later yeah. tonight, or maybe Saturday night, but we'll certainly get around to that. So, Rick, your picks uh, would be. A little bit of money and, and, and cookie there. Yeah, I think I think they've got a good pair of dogs there at the, at the leaderboard for right now. So yeah. how about you? What do you where do you, what well, do you think out of those? Well, I'm going to go with my son, I'm going to go with a sentimental favorite. I, I know this dog personally because I hunted her for a couple years. 
Uh, you know, and she's been looking really good. She's she's from the state of Tennessee. Uh, I believe I believe the babe female is going to make a deep run. You know, she placed two years ago. She's been to the top 103 consecutive years. She's just a dog that just turned, or she's four. And uh, so this is her third trip here. Uh, two years ago, she placed fifth. And uh, uh, last year, she got to the top 104, didn't do any good. And she's back in it this year. So she's been really consistent, you know. Mm -hmm. So if, if I had to pick, I would probably pick between uh, uh, Money and Bay. The little bit of Money Dog, I've hunted with him. And I've hunted with Cookie a bunch, too. But if, if I had to pick, I would probably be a toss-up between them three and my favorite, obviously, being Babe. Yep. So. You know, and, of course, I don't have the inside track that you guys, I'm not an insider uh, here in this Coonhound world. But, you know, looking at that list, seeing several of these dogs through the major events that we've been doing over the last couple of years, uh, I really agree that money is strong. And, of course, Sundown is always a, a dangerous dog. But... Man, I gotta tell you, I like that little female scar. Two years old, not far away from here, used to hunting in surroundings like these, and and, and the sentimental hometown favorite, of course, being a Tennessean, would have to be Babe. But you know, I'm, I'm thinking Scar is gonna go pretty doggone deep. Willie's in stain Scar here in, in this event. So you're looking at no number four there. Um, Russ Beller has had countless numbers of world For champions. champions yeah. And uh, as far as owners would go in that group right there, he would, he would exceed ownership of, of past world champions. And, uh, you know, there, there's a reason why they're in the top five of that list as well. So it's a, it's a good list and, and uh, no surprises there. I'm assuming the insane scar is out of Willie, who won the 2018 world hunt. Um, it, it goes back to bloodline, you know? It, it goes back to bloodline for a lot of these dogs. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, you know, we've got 104. Right now they've got it, you know, obviously in our pick them, those six are, are the top picks. But, man, there's a lot of dogs here, 104 dogs starting out tonight. Of course, after tonight we're going to break it down. We're, we're 26 cast. Hopefully we will have 26 cast winners, right. although that's not always assured because here at the World Coonhound Championship to win your cast and to move forward, you've got to have positive points. Right. Total yeah. score of plus. Yeah, total yeah. score of a plus. Yep. And, you know, hey, we've all been at the right spot, the perfect spot, should, should score on uh, multiple, but, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. We've, been, we've all been on them casts where it just doesn't work together. And, uh, you know, there's still a lot of leaves on the trees. I mean, they can, you know, they can be there and you not see them, you not find them, you know. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's definitely, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely that chance of that happening. Yeah, no know, doubt about it. You know, what would be considered a dead cast. Yeah, and you, Steve brings up a really, really good point. You know, we're used to having these events generally a little bit further north. I know last year for our world championship we were up pretty far north um, in Indiana, right. a little bit cooler. It was earlier. The trees had already started to turn. Leaves were starting to fall, and so they didn't have nearly those things to contend with. Here in West Tennessee, we've had steady temperatures uh, in the 80s and 90s through a lot of the summer. We've had a couple of mild two weeks, but we're still in full foliage, guys. I mean, when these guys get out there, there's going to be a lot of work to find you know, my biggest fear about having it here this time of year is having guys that, you know, tree coons that, raccoons that they're not able to find. And, you know, that can be very, very costly, particularly if it's a tree that's obviously not a circle tree. Um, and we're going to talk about that also here in, in just a minute. But, you know, 104 dogs. Let's talk first, though, before we go to that, about where we go from here. So we brought in. 104, 26 cast. Like I said, hopefully we're going to have 26 dogs advance. Now, from there tomorrow night, we're going to run two rounds, uh, not just one like tonight and Saturday night. So we drop from 26 to the top seven. Right. In the second round tomorrow night, which will actually be round three, those seven dogs will go out in three cast. Two two-dog cast and one three-dog cast. Is that correct? correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. 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 And that puts us in with a three-dog final on Saturday. Hopefully a three-dog final. But yep. again, right. nothing is guaranteed right. you know, in there that, that we will have a cast winner actually in all three casts. Uh, I would expect that 
to be the case because fortunately, you know, we're in an area that, like I said, I had several raccoons in my backyard last night. Routinely, we have them in the garage. I don't think there's a spot in the county where you can go with, where they're not abundant and becoming more and more abundant. Uh, but you do have the risk of having all the foliage out there, uh, a lot of vines in this part of West Tennessee, right. you know, and, and so when we score these dogs, there's three possible outcomes. You can have a positive, you can have a circle, or you can have a negative outcome. Um, Steve, tell us a little bit about how that works. So, so yeah, it's on a scoring order. So what ends up happening is, is um, you, you strike your dog when it's struck, uh, and you have a judge that monitors this, and then when they tree, you tree them. And, and it's worked off of a point system, first tree being uh, 125, second tree being 75, third tree being 50, fourth tree being 25. And, uh, and so what happens is after your, five, after your waiting period is up, which is five minutes, uh, you walk into the tree and then you have, an, uh, you have a shine time. And in that allotted shine time, you have to, you know, you have to find the raccoon. And uh, if they're up in a tree, you know, that, that has a lot of foliage, sometimes if they don't look, you know, sometimes they're right out in the open. But once you find that raccoon, that, then you're scored plus. Um, if you don't find the raccoon, but there's plenty of coverage there where, where the, the raccoon could be and you just can't see it, that points are circled. And the circle points don't really go for you, don't really go against you, but it can come into effective on a tiebreaker situation. And then on a minus point is something that none of us like, is uh, you can get minus several ways, but one of the ways is, is you walk into a tree and the raccoon has just pulled a slip on them. They have went up and come back out and they didn't catch it. And uh, there's, no, there's not enough leaves on the trees to, to see if there's one there or not, it, or that you can actually see that it's not there. Then you get minus whatever you were struck in for and whatever you was treated in for. Yep. So that's kind of the overall, that's the basic part of it. There's other ways you can get minus and that kind of thing, but that's the basic part of it, the scoring part. So Rick, um, we do have a lot of foliage on the trees here. What happens if these dogs tree on a tree and it's absolutely the foliage is super thick. There's no obvious hole or hollow in the tree, but you know, after the, the shine time has gone by, they haven't found game in that tree. Uh, like can, tree. Can a tree with a lot of foliage become a circle? Yes, yes, that's, that's when it will occur. Either a den tree or a tree with a lot of foliage where a coon could be, but we just haven't found it. Yeah. And uh, the eight minutes wasn't enough time to find it. Yes, and now one interesting thing that was announced here tonight uh, during our cast call uh, by our Master of Hounds was the fact that moving forward, the rules have changed recently. Uh, we're in the future, um, night vision is going to be Thermal imaging. Thermal, 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 sorry, yep, thermal yep. imaging, pardon me. Thermal yep. imaging is going to be come into play, yep. but not this year at the World Championship. Not until January 1. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and the, the idea of the thermal imaging is you can't score the, the raccoon with the thermal imaging, but it can lead you to look at that spot. Sure. And it, it definitely cuts down on the time on that you still have to see body, eyes or something you know but it can you know that what it helps and it is a bit it, it's it's really a huge breakthrough for united kennel club because yeah. it's going to uh we've all been in situations where the shine time is up you're leading away uh your minute or whatever and you cut the dogs loose and you're sitting there and, and invariably as a as a hunter i mean you want to look back at that tree one more time and you how should, did we miss this yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden right there he's looking right. and you know your dog did the job and as a handler, you didn't do your job right. to get that dog what he deserves. And so this is a huge testament to the rules committee, the people that voted on this, bringing this in, because it, it's it it that we were always trying to get the right dog to win the cast. You know, I mean, that's our that's our. And uh, I tell you, it's all about being fair and giving the dog the very very best shot to move forward in an event. And speaking of moving forward, uh, we've got a few cast winners that have arrived on the grounds and uh, we're yeah. about to we're about to take a little break guys. Showtime. It, yeah, it's, it's, ready. Fun. Hey, it's midnight mayhem it is one minute till midnight we're fixing to take a quick break here uh for some of our sponsors folks stick with us a whole lot more action coming up here tonight we're going to take it to break but here in a couple minutes we'll be right back to bring you midnight mayhem from the 2022 united kennel club world coonhound championship
Check out the United Kennel Club online store for all of our magazine subscriptions and UKC merchandise. Go to shop.ukcdogs.com and you'll find all the best gear to support your UKC lifestyle. Snag a new hat, hoodie, or t-shirt and subscribe to our many publications, including our world-leading coonhound publication, Coonhound Bloodlines. We even have research pedigrees and rule books available to purchase. Why wait? Shop now. Welcome back to the 2022 UKC World Coonhound Championships. Uh, we've had a really fun evening so far, preparing for our Midnight Mayhem red carpet event. And so now we've got our first cast winners that have come back here to the fairgrounds here in Dyersburg, Dyer County. And going to take it over to Rick Stretch with our first cast winner of the night. Rick, who we got here? Well, we've got a senior citizen dog here. She's an eight-year-old walker female, and her name is a dog named Chicken, and uh, she's owned by the owner handler Robert Hutchins and Kelly Brannon, and they are from, uh, they come from the Pilot Mountain Zone. zone. zone uh, tell me a little bit about that, Kelly, how you guys got through that zone there. Uh, I believe she placed third, she had 550 on Saturday night. One cast win? One cast win, no good on Friday. Okay, all right, Robert was handling then? Yeah. Okay, and uh, Robert, uh, how long have you been partners on this dog here? She, she had about a year and a half old. Okay, all right, so your partner's early on. All right, tell me a little bit about your hunt tonight, Robert. I looked at the scorecard, but give us a little bit of a... Good hunt, good train, real good cast, good judge. And you scored on? Scored on three coons. Okay, all right. And your final score? 400 plus. 400, all right. Um, Kelly and I go back to 1991. At Murfreesboro. Yeah, Kelly, give me a good education there at the World Hunt. Um, <laughs> We made it to the semifinal round, mm -hmm. and Kelly won that cast there and uh, made it to the final round the year Radar. Nelson's Radar won, yep. and you finished second. second. Was it just a two-dog yep. final then? two-dog okay. cast. How do you compare, the, what was the dog's name? Tinker. Tinker. How do you compare Chicken to Tinker? Chicken's a whole lot better. Oh, okay. Tinker, mm, she's okay. <laughs> well, she looked okay the night she beat me, <laughs> I'll say that. Um, anything, uh, what kind of preparation to get here, Robert? What, have, do you do the hunting through the week on her? Or? Yep. So she's eight years old. You're not going to teach her much. Fifth, she's been turned loose about 15 times since February. Two first strikes, one tree that she can't. Now, if you go on to win this hunt with that kind of a story, we're going <laughs> we're to break a lot of hearts. Um, so 15 times since February. February. Had, so had no intentions of hunting her in it. Just decided we was gonna break her out one more time. Okay, and where did you go to the qualifier at? Uh, Carroll, yeah, Virginia. Carroll County, Virginia. The last, the okay. Last, the last one. The last she won, one. Yeah. She won it. Only one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, now you're in the top 26. Yep. And uh, you'll rest the rest of the night, and then come back here tomorrow evening and uh, and try it again. Um, yep. You feeling good about it? What you, what's the story here? She's got a pretty good average. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations to both of you. Good seeing you. And Kelly, yep. good seeing you yep. again. There you have it. Chicken won uh, cast number three tonight. Okay, guys, so you just saw Chicken, our first cast winner of the night. Chicken had a really strong run, came in with 400 points here to win the cast, had two first mm -hmm. strikes uh, and one tree all on her own. As a matter of fact, the uh, second dog in the cast only put up 175 positive points. So Chicken did a really good job tonight, and we've got our first winner advancing out of our 104 to our top 26. And we've got them rolling in here, guys, so we're going to keep this thing moving along pretty quickly now because 
It's after midnight. Midnight mayhem has really begun as we've seen a number of cast winners roll in the back door here uh, at the Dyersburg Dyer County Fairgrounds. And as a matter of fact, I believe that we've got dog number two or winner cast winner number two to come in. And by the way, when I say cast winner number two, this not necessarily means this dog won the second cast. It's the second cast winner that we've had come in. Uh, to the house here tonight. So I'm going to just go on and throw it right back over to you, Rick, right quick, where we can move on through these guys. Who we got here, Rick? Well, the winner of cast six this evening, uh, Wyatt Monin with Boost Rookie Hawk. And Wyatt, where are you from? Um, I'm from the far northwest corner of Iowa, Lester, Iowa. But uh, I just tell people I'm closest to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Okay. <laughs> All right. And what zone did you uh, place in to get here? Um, I placed in the Brooklyn, Wisconsin zone, yep. Um, we had real good cast both nights there. Um, I ended up training two coons alone first night. Um, Thank you, and I'll keep And then the next head. night, I, I trained two more coons and got a piece of one then. So you were a cast winner both I, nights up there at I that zone? Yeah, second in the zone. All right. Tell me a little bit about your dog. Well, uh, this is, uh, this is Hawk. Uh, like, might be known a little better really as What's Up, Hawk. Up um, like I bought him from Chuck Cliver and Mike Gilbert. At that point where I was had some pups dying on me, my old dog's dying, and Blew up a couple of them, so I ended up buying him and whatnot, and that's probably two and a half, three years ago, and he's been pretty good to me since. Um, I hunted mostly PKC, but I really like the way UKC does these events, the oh. TOC in the world, so figured break him out and give a run at it. I mean, everyone wants to win UKC World, don't they? That is a fact. That is a fact. Um, so he's got some yeah, titles prior to getting here? Just me um, what I made yeah, he it, does. I've got a, he's got around 17,000 won in PKC, no, which is pretty tough on, being as I'm so far away from everything, and... Uh, that's four. that's about it though. You know, I'm, I'm at the top hundred at uh, TFC this to, year also with him. Um, he's just been pretty good to me. I, I like him. The score I'll talk about on Common Coon Trier. And what about your cast tonight? Um, it went pretty like good. Two, so I struck second, and, and uh, I treated Coon South. Everything else was going north at first, and uh, I recut off that. And one dog ended up getting scratched treeing a possum. And then, yeah, I I ended up treeing two coons. Dustin Stewart treed two coons, and I had him beat on strike, and he got cut loose with a couple minutes left. Okay. Uh, we heard him finally. We we're the last two left in the cast, and uh, I didn't need that one. He had a coon th over there too. So, and his age? He's six. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. So he must go back to What's Up Doc. Yep. He's a he's a great grandpa to What's Up Doc. He's right out of What's Up Spot, and then Daryl Hargis is a Slamhound Jojo dog. Okay. So. That was, that was actually a pretty good cross, I think. There's, I've done some winning with two other litter mates to that, and I've heard of good things about the other ones. So how are you feeling about your chances now? Well, I'm feeling all right, I guess. So I uh, I don't know. I just sort of got some stuff figured out with him. I had some blood work out, and I just got him started on some thyroid pills uh, 10 days ago. And he seemed to just snap right out of it and go right back to how he was. There's a lot of our dogs got thyroid issues at this yeah. point. And, uh so yeah, it it can knock one down, yeah, but uh, through medication you can get them right back up. Yep, he uh, I put him in one cast, uh, PKC cast at my place, and he looked good. And then that's all I hunted him before the zones, and he looked good at zones. He looked good tonight, so I think he's I think he's back. Hoping he can keep it rolling for mm -hmm. us. So. We'll see so you seem pretty cool, cool and calm tonight. Um, are you are you nervous at all? Yeah, I'm nervous. Yeah, absolutely nervous. Yeah. Uh, just excited to be here. You know, I've been snake bit with this hunt for years. I mean, six years, five, six years, I think I've gone to it, and I've never even won a cast at Zones. And to be here, it just, it means a lot. I'm real happy about it. Well, so. all right, congratulations. Appreciate it. Be back in here tomorrow evening for the next round. Sounds great. Thank you. <clears throat> there you have it, guys. Hawk won your cast number six. There you go, guys. Well, thank you very much, Rick. So... Uh, Steve, looks like we had a really good showing by Hawk. This was, this was basically a dog fight to the very end. Hawk comes in and wins with 350 plus, uh, 300 to the dog in second, and then we had two that had a little less fortune at night. But what I see with this cast, they scored on five raccoons. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a really good hunt. And uh, uh, both dogs treat each treat uh, you know like he shared the hawk dog treat two, uh, you know the 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 collector dog treat two. That's a very competitive cast, you know, and uh, to score on, uh, on five raccoons like that, it's exciting, you know, it's, it, it really is. Yep. Well, glad to see that and also glad to see with no delay whatsoever, we've got our third cast winner that's come in. Rick, let's talk about this. Well, here we are with Kevin Cable, 
and a little bit of money, and you guys were just talking about him on the uh, leaderboard on the Pick'em uh, to win this world hunt. Kevin, congratulations. Tell us a little bit about your cast here this evening. Uh, we end up treeing two coons, one dog treat a coon, and then I treat a circle tree and a coon by myself. All right, and this one here is out of which which one of your dogs? He's off of uh, Little Money and a uh, Beller's and Bitch. Okay, all right, a little bit about his style? Uh, he's quick, deep through the country, you normally with a coon somewhere. All right, and you got uh, through the zones probably at Portland, I'm not sure, but probably. Yeah, Portland, double cast win. Double cast win at Portland. Um, what what uh, where did you qualify at to get to Portland? Uh, Adam Conley, the guy I bought him from, he ended up qualifying him at Liberty. I messed my ankle up, and he got him qualified for me. All right. Now we see he's a two year old. Yep. Uh, has he been doing great things for for a little while now? Oh, or? Yeah. He he at one time he was the youngest Grand Knight. Uh, I think a record got broke now, but he was the youngest Grand. Knight. Oh wow! I remember you. Okay, I remember you talking about that. Yeah. Um, so getting him ready to come down here, is there anything different that you do with him that you've done with the other dogs, or what's going on there? No, you just got to hunt him a bunch, keep him dialed in. Yeah. Is he uh, is he a typical big money, big D style dog? Uh, yeah, he's a little tight on the ground, but he moves around good. And covers coons, the country. Covers the ground. All right. Well, now you made the top 26, and uh, you're not nervous. It is what it is. You've been, to, you've been to these things many a times. If it's meant to be, it'll work. Sure, yep. Congratulations, Kevin. Be back here tomorrow night. Thank you. And Kevin, and a little bit of money, we're in cast 21. Wow. So we're taking a look. We've seen, uh, you know, one of the ones that was a favorite, of course, a little bit of money. Actually looks like it's going to get closer yeah, to getting in the, the money right now. He was, you know, he was the number one uh, pick dog in the, in the, in the pick'ems. And, uh, you know, if, if you look on here, like you shared, they scored on two, you know, scored on two raccoons. And, and the biggest thing that I see here is uh, he kept his nose clean. You yeah. know, if you, if you look at the card, uh, there's no minus points on there. And uh, that's huge in this hunt. You know, the, the, you know, score on one or two raccoons and then and then keep your nose clean. And as you can see that, uh, you know, a few of the other ones had a little bit less mo uh, misfortune on that. And a lot of times that can be the deciding factor. Sure. So. And, you know, we talked a lot about the, the possibility here to not have a positive score. And uh, here we see only one dog out of the four in the cast, a little bit of money with the 150 out of positive score. We've also got uh, a zero and two negatives. So it is possible that we'll have a cast that we don't have a dog advance out of. But for the next cast coming up, that's certainly not the case. Uh, we have yet another cast winner that's made it to the podium. Rick? Let's talk about this a little bit, you guys. You ready? Yeah, here we are with uh, Cast 13 winner, and the dog's name is No Gamble Put Him to Sleep, and he's owned by Adam Campbell and handled by? Jeremiah Roller. Jeremiah Roller. We didn't have that information here, Jeremiah. Uh, tell me a little bit about your cast this evening. Uh, it went pretty good. We treed three coons, um, a couple of circle trees. I just made one tree and had first and first on it. Went pretty smooth. Okay. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the zone that you went to to get to make it here? Uh, we went to Zone Four, Palmyra, Missouri. All right, and how did you do out there? Uh, won the first night with six and a quarter and got beat the second night. Okay, so you had a good enough score, one yeah. cast win to to reach this point. Yep. You, can you tell me a little bit about his breeding? Uh, he's at a Neosho Cuz and uh, one of Jerry Mall's females. Okay, and Cuz made the list with a few 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 dogs in this this evening. Um, what's his style? Fly through the country and looking for a hot one. Yeah, for something you can see, I'm assuming. He'll run a track, but no, that's not his forte necessarily. Yeah. Now, how much work did Greg Maynard do to get him here? <laughs> According to him, a lot. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt, no about, doubt. About the last three weeks, that's where I've put in my time. So. Okay, all right. So you've had him? You've had him about a month now, I guess. Okay. Okay, all right. Well, be back here tomorrow evening. Right. We're going to start the show, I think, about 5 o'clock. Good luck to you. Yep. All right, Steve, well, we're just taking a look at the scorecard here. Again, this was another really, really tight one, only 75 points uh, between the cast winner and the dog that came in second. What, what do you see there looking at well, the card? Well, uh, another, like you said, a competitive cast. They scored on three coons, and uh, three out of the four uh, each scored on a coon, scored on their own coon. And, uh, you know, that's, sometimes that's all you can ask. Sometimes the only thing that, uh, as you can see here, the only thing that, uh, you know, he ended up uh, getting struck for first uh, and another dog got struck for a quarter, you know, 
uh, in Frida Kuhn. And the other one had a little misfortune, pulled a little bit of minus. But uh, again, it just, that cast just simply come down to a, a strike that one, that was a difference. You know, a dog getting struck first and a dog getting struck last, you know. Yeah, and here so, at the Worlds, I mean, it is the it little is. things that make the difference here. Um, these guys are coming in pretty steadily. We've already got somebody else back up on the podium. So let's go on and throw it back to Rick. Guys, we're here with cast uh, number two winner and uh, Rambo's first blood, and they call him Rambo, I guess. And it's a father and son team here, uh, Troy Burkett and his son Jacob, and Jacob's doing the handling. Uh, tell me a little bit about your cast tonight, Jacob. Uh, we treated uh, two coons and uh, several den trees tonight. Went pretty good. Did this coon seem to be moving in your area? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, good tracks anyway. Okay. All right. Um, how did you get here? What what zone did you guys come from? Uh, we come from Portland, Indiana. Okay. Did you win both rounds? One round? What did you do? I won uh, second round. I got beat first round. And what kind of score up there at Portland? I had 450 plus. Okay. You were towards the end yeah. of making the cutoff then. Yeah. Troy, what's your dog out of? Um, Indian Outlaw and Bushwhacking Mini. Indian Outlaw, National Grand Knight Champion, Indian Outlaw. Yep. Okay. All right, and you've had her, had him how long? Uh, since he was six months old. Okay, all right. Uh, hunting style? He ain't a blow through the country kind of dog. He's not? No, they get in there. He takes his tracks as they come to him. You know, good tree dog, so. Jacob, how old are you? Uh, 21. 21? Yep. How's it feel to win the first round of the world hunt this weekend? Nerve-wracking, I guess. No, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. We were just talking about that a little while ago, that uh, the nerves are out there. Yeah. And uh, now you've won round one, and you get to compete in round two tomorrow night. Yep. Uh, what kind of strategy? How would you get here? What? What? Uh, why are you here tonight? Uh, well, the dog, really. Just call the dog for what he is. And that's what gets you here. All right. <laughs> okay, very good. Yep. Congratulations, Jacob. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. So there you have it, guys. Cast two, Rambo's first blood. I'll tell you what, in that cast two, Steve, there were a couple things that really struck me looking at the scorecard here. First of all, these guys in this cast traveled a long way to get here. We've got a dog from Pennsylvania, a dog from Indiana, and a couple from Virginia. But the other thing that really struck me looking at the scorecard, uh, and it had to be a nervous night for our cast winner, too. I mean, this dog has three circle trees here on the scorecard and all of them and the one that positive that he won on are first trees so it looks like you know there was this dog was going really really hot and heavy to, to tree unfortunately we had three trees where they just couldn't find it but fortunately they were able to make game uh in, in tree number four so uh, we'll see how that can, a, a, a point on this dog which really awesome so last year the final three uh, dogs of the of the world hunt. One of them was Indiana Outlaw, and one of them was Bushwhacking Mini. This dog, Siren Dam. Yeah. And now he's in the top twenty-six. How cool is that? That is really yeah. really neat. Yeah. So, it. and yep. by a hair. I mean, fortunately, they yeah, were able absolutely. to find game. So in that's that one really tree. that's really really awesome. So absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. You know, we've been seeing a lot of Walker dogs, but uh, we've got another breed coming in here. Let's talk to our next cast winner, Rick. Right now we are uh, looking at Hearn's Blue Mabel and uh, Blue Tick female, five years old, and she's owned by uh, Trey Hearn. And again, I got another father and son team here, but uh, tonight Trey's doing the handling on her. Trey, tell us a little bit about your cast this evening. Uh, it's a great group of guys, Judge and, and the guide were, were awesome. Uh, great group of dogs. We got quick strikes and everything. Tracking conditions are a little rough. Couldn't too, move too many tracks very well, but. We ended up getting one out of there and got a couple coon treed and, and got the win. How many did she score on this evening? Just one. Just one. Yeah. Okay. Um, what zone did you guys go to to get here? Zone 7 out of Queen City, Texas. All right. And how did you do down there? A lot of the same conditions. It was rough, hot, tracking conditions. Uh, we got in on Friday night and uh, ended up having a dead cast on Saturday night. What kind of score Friday night? It is 200 plus. All right. Um, so you've won the first round here at the World Hunt. Yes, sir. How does it feel? Oh, it feels good. Yeah. You know, a lot of pressure off. You know, you're a small percentage to make it this far, the inner RQEs. So now it's just go have some fun. Yeah, yeah. And you're back out here tomorrow night. 
Uh, you'll be down to seven cash tomorrow night, first round. Any kind of strategy, anything you're going to do different than what you've done to get here? All I can do is call the dog. Yeah. It's up to her. Is he doing the, uh, the yard work and stuff like that, taking care of her while you're resting? Yeah, he, he takes care of just about everything. I just get to come up here and get all the glory. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. Be here tomorrow evening. All right, again. Cash four there, Blue Mabel. Your yeah. first off-breed dog, or if you call it an off-breed. <laughs> you know, I know a lot of guys that love blue ticks that would definitely take offense to off-breed dog there. What do you think, Steve? Absolutely. It's always, it's, always good to, it's always good to see that here. You know, obviously this hunt, there's a lot more walkers that are, that are uh, entered. Uh, you know, it's just a percentage game. But, uh, you know, I had a chance to talk to them guys earlier, and uh, they was confident coming in here. They, they, they feel like they have just as good a shot as any. And, again, what stands out to me on this hunt here, uh, that really the difference maker, is, again, there's no minus points in this column. And, unfortunately, uh, for the rest of the cast, they all, you know, uh, you know, they got in that minus column. And, you know, when you can score on a raccoon and, and stay out of that minus column, it can a lot of times be the difference maker. No and, doubt. Uh, and it definitely was a difference maker here. Particularly when you've got a lot of very, very tight scores, as we saw on here. You know, you're looking at uh, only 75 points separating the winner and the next dog. Yeah. And speaking of next dog, I believe we've got another dog that's come to the bench, and uh, I'm betting that it's probably another tree and walker. Rick? Yeah, you're uh, correct in that. <laughs> um, we do have another tree and walker here, but a uh, little bit of a side story here. Uh, Tree and Walker owned by lifelong black and tan guys, um, Randy Coble and Jordan Coble and uh, Brian Hitch here. And uh, the dog's name's Money Credit Karma, and uh, she's a direct daughter of Big Money. Correct. All right, you're doing the handling? That's right. And tell me a little bit about your cast this evening. Um, we only treated one cane is right at the end, so it was a... It when was you say bad. right at the end, what do you mean right at the end? Like... We walked right at the end of the cast and treated the last game, the only game. Right? Holy cow. And without that one there, you're, nobody's advancing. That's right. Yeah. Um, so the conditions were a little bit tougher for you guys out there this evening. Oh, yeah. The one we're used to, yeah. Uh, plenty of strikes, plenty of trees, or what yeah, was going on there? We made some trees and couldn't find any coons. So. Okay. She, made, she only made one tree. Made one tree. Mm -hmm. So tell me why are we standing here with a spotted dog instead of a black one, <laughs> Mr. Coble? can't find the right one good luck <laughs> yeah um tell me what zone did you guys go to probably portland yes and yep. you did the handling at portland yep, sure did. okay and what did you do up there uh, i won my cast friday with 700 plus and then saturday we didn't do any good coasted along that's right all right um what about your nerves here this evening nah, i'm doing okay so far <laughs> yeah you got some good backup here i can that's tell right. you that for sure about that um, you made the top 26, assuming we have 26 dogs tomorrow night. Yep. Um, anything different you're going to do tomorrow, or or uh, we're just going to cruise right along just like we have been to get here? Team effort here, bud. Yeah, no doubt. Now, <laughs> what's Mr. Cole? What's your job in this whole ordeal here? Truck driver. Truck driver. Okay. Jordan, what do you do? Oh, uh, just hunt with him. We, he, hunt, we hunt five or six nights a week, so just uh, keeping her tuned up. Now, is this, uh, this one's related to your male dog that... Uh, uh, or yeah, half sister. So yeah, half sister. Okay. All right. All right. Well, congratulations, guys. Good to see you right in here. Yes, sir. See you tomorrow night. Yep. Thank you. There you go, guys. Uh, direct daughter of big money. That's what we were talking about a while ago. Sure thing. So we've got the scorecard here for this dog. What stands out to you right now, Steve? Well, you know, as you heard from him, uh, you know. Not a lot of action out of her, but when the when the money was on the line, when the cards was on the line, uh, she produced a raccoon right at the very end. And uh, you know them style, you know, and you know she, here again, she's a four year old hound. Uh, she's seasoned, and you know usually at this hunt, you have to win one of them type of casts to win this world hunt. You know when the conditions may not be quite right, and you know things just aren't quite going together. You have to have the ability to pull that out at the very end. You know, I, I know the year that I made the Final Four, uh, I won one of them rounds I won in the last 18 seconds of the hunt. And as you heard from them, uh, she produced a coon when the money was on the line. And a lot of times a seasoned hound, they just have that ability to keep their nose clean and, and pull it out. And this, so that's what she did. So yeah. awesome, outstanding. 
And the other thing that I find interesting here on this is, uh, once again, this was the only dog to produce any positive points. I mean, we've got uh, one dog in a circle and two dogs in the negative. So she was able to pull it out and get those positive points that you've got to have to move forward here at the World Championships. And speaking of moving forward, we've got another one that's moved forward up on the bench. Rick, tell us who we got here. We have got Split Creek Poseidon. English male, five years old, and I know he's out of Ohio. Um, owned by Kane Taylor and uh, handled by Logan Douglas. Logan, uh, how long have you been hunting he's this dog? Two uh, I've had him at the house for two weeks now. He's just been back and forth between us. Did you guys hunt together quite a bit before coming here, or you guys hunt together all the time? What's the story there? Not really. Just had a little backyard plan coming together here. Okay, so uh, not not uh, we haven't thought this through too much, and here we are, won the first round of the world hunt. Yes, sir. How's your nerves? They're all right, just staying calm. How did your cat? How did your cast go tonight? Uh, started out a little rough. We treated a circle right out of the truck. Uh, then we got treed. He stayed treed there. He's treed there for a while. I just couldn't hear him till the end. I got hooked. We got probably 100 yards, 80 yards from him. He left, so we had to minus him. Well, he started meal milling around, kinda. Put a 15 on him. He got out of there, kind of. He got treed through there, had a coon, put us at even, had about probably 10 minutes left, cut him back loose, loaded up again. He had another one for the whim. Wow, that's cutting it short. Mm -hmm. That is cutting it short. Kane, tell us a little bit about your dog. Uh, I was just a little dog here I picked up probably three, four months ago off a couple boys. He uh, came off the house, you know, just sitting there on a the dog box and We've been doing some fun, having a little bit of winning with him. So you guys took him to his first qualifier, I'm assuming, for the year? No, Chase Mead won the qualifier with him. Okay, and then you guys went to Portland? Yes. And and how did that go again? Well, he won both of his casts here with Douglas, and you see who's hunting him tonight. All right, yeah, so we're keeping everything the same. That's right. Yeah, nothing's changing, nothing's changing. Tell us a little bit about his breeding. Uh, this dog here is out of Taylor Made Rasputin and Main Street Kate. Uh, it's about all I really know. I mean, it is what it is, guys. It's just a dog, nothing special. And now he's in the top 26. A little bit of a specialty there. What, uh, and you're not nervous at all. You're just, you're just out there playing the game. I got nerves, but I just got to keep them. Again, can't show them real. Yep. All right, very good. Good luck to you. Be back here tomorrow night. All right, thanks, so. Uh, you guys. Rick, thank you very much. I'll tell you what, Steve, again, we had another one that was very close. Uh, the thing that's surprising me so far tonight, particularly knowing how much games in the area is, we're not seeing a whole lot of points. And, and I tell you, this scorecard here, I know you want to elaborate on it a little bit. I mean, this is an up and down and another one where it looks like right at the last minute came through, the dog came through and came through big to pull it out. So tell us what you're seeing here, analyze it. Well, I can tell you uh, by looking here, this dog started out 150 in the hole and come back and won this cast. And I can tell you, uh, that's tough to do. A lot of times when you get in these hunts and early on in the hunt, you pull a, you know, a, a, a slick like that. I don't know how he got minus, but he pulled 150 minus. And to come back and win that cast, and you heard what he said, he had to tree coon right at the very end. But uh, you know, again, it takes some breaks, you know. Uh, not a lot of stuff going on, and uh, one other dog. Uh, one other dog looks like one other dog treated coon, but also had some minus points, and uh, he was able to, you know, he was able to uh, pull pull it out. So uh, I guarantee he feels very fortunate moving forward and very excited. So you know, sometimes you can overcome it, and tonight he was able to. Yeah, it was definitely, definitely very, very tight. And I'll tell you, looking at these, I do have a, a prediction. I'm not sure we're going to see 26 dogs make it over to the bench tonight because there's a real good possibility that we're not we're going to have a cast that doesn't come in and pause the points what well, do you think yeah well they are they are they are updating the scores to us as they're coming in and and i know of, of one dead cast already oh wow uh, so yeah, you know so there's that's gonna guys. happen you know it, it, it's again you, you we're in great hunt as you can see there's casts that are scoring on multiple raccoons uh, but sometimes, you know, it, we, we don't know what happened on that dead cast, but sometimes, you know, maybe they, maybe there was one there, you couldn't find it, you know, that kind of thing. There's a lot of things that can play into that. Sure, sure. So. And speaking of dogs making it to the bench, uh, we have another one. And once again, this is a dog that is not a treeing walker. So, Rick, tell us about this group. <laughs> thumbs up. Over there. What's going on with that there? 
Cast number eight. Uh, here's your winner this evening, Grand Night Champion Prairie Creek Blue Bozo, owned by Jason Schulte and uh, handled by Austin Wallace. And Austin, tell us a little bit about your cast this evening. Well, it didn't start out too hot. I took a 100 bump right out of the truck, struck him under the minute, and took him minus. He went in there, treated a raccoon, and then we flipped him off that, and he treated another raccoon, and there we sat. We're <laughs> right here. And uh, the other dogs, what what uh, what went on there? Did they score on some coons as well? Or? Uh, oh, the first tree, the, the black dog and the walker dog, they had a little tussle, and black dog got scratched, and then the other guy withdrew, and then we got down to uh, the, just me and this other walker female, and just the way it went. I mean, she treat, she uh, she got treated right at the end of the hunt to win it, and I thought, oh, boy, here it is, dagger, and we're going home. But she had a circle tree, and we advanced. I thought she, <laughs> she had a coon. And what a feeling that is. I can, <laughs> I can tell you're excited. Yeah. Jason, tell me a little bit about your dog. Oh, he's just a two-year-old dog that can treat a coon. And his breeding? He's out of a dog called Prairie Creek Botox and Red Stick Ann, dog in Louisiana. And you guys went to the Wisconsin zone, is that right, Austin? You did the handling up there? Yeah, yep. I went to Wisconsin. Uh, Friday night I had, what did I have, 470? I had 475, and then Saturday night I, I, I treated him too quick on a fence line, and he moved, and I took some minus, and I didn't win Saturday night, but I had enough and got lucky and got in. So, so I see he's only uh, two years old. Yeah. So how, how long have you had him again, Jake? Since he was 11 months old. 11 months. So you guys have put all the time in him. <laughs> he did. He just called me and said he got him qualified, and I said, I'll take him. <laughs> Another one of these stories. Uh, how, how many times did you hunt with him before you got here? Oh, I told I told uh, Jason I want him by August so I can hunt him, you know. <laughs> I want to know what's going on. And so you had him a month and a half, roughly. Yeah, yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you made the top 26, 24, 25, yeah. wherever we're at. Yeah. Um, be back here tomorrow night. Congratulations. Thank I can you. tell you're excited. Oh, yeah. You won't go to sleep till noon tomorrow, no, no, probably. I'll be sleeping, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you can see we have some handlers, as we predicted, super, super excited to be here and to make it to the bench. Love to see these young well, guys. That's not enough for you, Burke Holder, on this. Is this something you missed out on? Or what? Well, I talked to these guys earlier in uh, kind of a cool backstory. They was pretty confident coming in here. Uh, you know, they you know they thought the dog was looking good. You know, and they they felt like they had a really good shot at winning this thing. He's got a two year old and, dog. He must yeah. be pretty good. Yeah, and uh, in spite of his handler once in a while. And you know something about this dog. I know he didn't share it, but um, uh, Jason Schalte there owns the sire to this dog and has done very well with him. Has, has raised several uh, pups off him that have been young dogs that have been really good. So. Absolutely. So it's, uh, you know, again, uh, had the dog since he was 11 months old, um, you know, had him for a little over a year. And, young dog, uh, yeah, yeah for Young sure. dog. And he, again, he was, you know, like he shared, he was one of them guys that was able to overcome that 100 minus right out of the truck, you know. And you love to see somebody that gets in there and, and that really, really fights it out, too. Uh, my buddy Sean Todd, i got to give a shout-out to Sean, uh, was the guide for this. And, you know, looking at this score sheet, a lot of interesting things on here. I'll tell you what, I hope Sean sticks around because I can't wait to hear the story on this one, particularly when we see a handler that is so animated and excited about making it through to that top 26. And speaking of excited, we've got another handler that ought to be pretty excited because we got another dog on the bench, Rick. Tell us about this winner. These guys will go for happy. Well, it's one of the fan favorites, I can tell you that. And uh, Burke Holder's uh, uh, dog is still in there the, that he's picked. Um, here we've got uh, a country babe. And uh, she's owned by uh, Ron Chapman and uh, uh, Blake Robertson. So, Blake, tell me a little bit about your dog here. Well, I was fortunate enough for Mr. Ron to let me hunt her. Uh, she just uh, get, gets out there and gets struck and trees a coon every now and then, you know. There's a lot of us in this building that have hunted with her, and she is top-notch, I'm telling you. Yeah. One of the toughest females out there. I don't like to brag when I'm up too, too much, <laughs> you know. Well, we can do it for you. <laughs> Ron, you and uh, Steve were partners on her for a little while. For a, From the time she started competition until this spring. Yeah, um, so then you and Joseph partnered up on her, and Joseph's been hunting her ever since. Joseph's been hunting her since this spring, and I think this is the 10th cast he's had her in, and he's won eight of them. 
Wow, we. That's awesome. That is awesome. So you're in the top 20, let's call it for now, and uh, you're coming back tomorrow night. Anything you're going to do, any kind of preparation besides sleep? I'm just going to strike and treat my dough. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your cast tonight. Uh, it, it really slow cast. We didn't treat but two coons. Uh, one, a dog that struck for a hunter treated a coon, and uh, the other two didn't do much, and I was struck for a quarter. And she, she treated the coon pretty quick uh, within the first eight minutes, and then uh, she just trailed the rest of the night and got treated there at the end. She had another one, but it was after the hunt, but it, I didn't eat it anyways. The dog that treated the first coon made, made a bad tree, and that's really what won it for me. Yes, okay. Um, she's, a, she's a daughter of uh, Big Country, a dog that uh, John Strickland and Ashley Oxenine had that, uh, that uh, Steve had at one time. Yeah, sure. Um, where did you guys go to get here? Did you guys go to Portland? Queen City. Queen City, okay. Yeah, we won that zone, yeah. You won both rounds? Yeah. Okay. What kind of scores did you have down there? Uh, Friday night I had 362.5, and, a half and uh, Saturday night what 350. So, Ron, she's one of the fans. She's the highest scoring dog of Queen City of the Zone 7. Okay, so she was first place winner at the zone, down in, down in the Texas zone. So she's one of the fan favorites, Ron. What do you think about her? I think she's awesome. I love her. I, I raised her from a pup, and I told Steve when I let him have her, take her and Ellie both up there, I said, he said, which one of them is the best, Ron? I said, one of them ain't no better than the other one, but she's my favorite. So and and her litter mate wound up where? Somebody she did her litter mate disappeared last year in Arkansas. We don't know if it was stolen, what happened, but uh, Brian Davis was hunting her for me, and he, she disappeared out of his kennel. Wow. Her name was Ellie May. She had she was as good as babe. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations, guys. You guys are calm, cool, and collected. I can tell. There you go, Burkholder. Your pick is still in the running. You know, I can't believe he's saying, there you go, Burkholder. Your pick is still in the running. Because I well, recall he, well, he kind of got used hey, to that after the luck. TOC. Hey, so. <laughs> uh, no, I'm telling you. Yeah, we're not even going to talk about whose picks won at the TOC. But as I recall, when we were going through our first six tonight, I did comment that in my two, I liked Scar, but I also liked that hometown favorite Babe Dog. So, uh, Rick, I did agree at least here with Mr. Burkholder and uh, hopefully at the end of this tonight guys we'll be able also to update you a little bit on those top six in the pick em. actually top five because two were tied for fifth place and tell you who made it and who didn't but definitely Babe has made it and moving on ahead also another thing that I, I want to hit on here just being a dog guy right quick you'll see a lot of these dogs Steve come up uh, we've got dog coming to the bench now that is wearing a couple of different collars and um, these dogs are allowed during the competition. They do wear tracking collars so they can follow the dog along. You cannot wear an e-collar, though, any collar that can give a correction during the hunt. However, you are liable to see a dog come to the bench here tonight that's wearing an e-collar because some of these guys, you know, want to be able to control the dog when they get in here. So uh, make that perfectly clear. If a dog's wearing an e-collar coming in, it certainly didn't have it on during the hunt, did it? Right. Absolutely, and 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 you, you you're probably not going to see any dog come in here wearing an e-collar. What you're going to see around them is a is a is a most of them have a Garmin tracking collar, uh, and it's a very it's it when that when they introduced that a few years ago, probably four or five years ago now, it really really helped uh, us. It, it's it's for the protection of the dog because you know you're you're casting free casting these dogs in territory they've never been in. And uh, you can basically watch to the very T of where they're moving. If they're going toward a place that could get them in danger, that kind of thing, uh, you know, you can get around there and, and you know, uh, take care of that to get them out of the danger and, and so forth. So used to be in the old days we had what we called a beat beat system. Uh, it was a lot different than what we have today's age. You know, the technology that they've come out with and what it's helped us do with uh, our hounds has been incredible on the safety side of it. It really is a safety issue. No, no doubt about it. We're seeing so many advancements along the way to make this safer. We talked about the thermal in imaging to put, you know, to give the dog a fair chance, but also we have technology evolving. Of course, here at UKC, we're really, really excited about the partnership that we have with Dogtra, who has burst onto the scene 
big time with their tracking collars. Another and very the, and, good unit. Yeah, the tracking collar technology, you know, that Dogtris awesome. brought here and, and yeah. made possible in these events is, is wonderful. And we're also very, very appreciative of their support um, of the event. And, you know, uh, I did see a dog that came through a minute ago wearing an e-collar, but I noticed looking at the flash of it, it was actually set in bark mode, I believe. But yeah, we, you know, you may see one that comes through with a, a lot of these dogs too, because they, they're very, very vocal. Some of these guys, once they get in, you know, when I pull in uh, with my dogs, of course, I'm a retriever guy, but still when I'm on the road, I don't want to listen to a lot of barking. So, you know, a lot of times my dogs, people think they're wearing an e-collar when really it's a bark collar. But uh, again, you, you know, when they're out in the field, tracking collars are allowed. E-collars strictly are not. But Zero. once they come in here and the hunt's over, all, all bets are off. And, yeah. But al almost all of these dogs, if you see them in the field, you know, uh, a lot of these guys are going to be wearing that new dog technology. They're all going to have GPS is on just about um, in, in the field. And uh, we've had some exciting stuff coming in here. We failed to mention uh, that own bay, but again, that was, uh, you know, kind of a uh, squeaker, but uh, made they, it on through 150 they, to the positive. They, yeah, they, you know, they, they scored on two raccoons. Uh, the other dog was struck for more on the coon in tree, but it pulled a minus tree. You yep. know, and uh, again, that's, that's, you know, that can be the difference in these casts. Sure. If you get one, uh, you know, and you're going to hear this a lot on us sharing it tonight. If you can get one that goes out and scores on one or two raccoons and keeps their nose clean, them are the dogs that are really, really, really tough to beat this hunt. They're uh, really tough to beat out of this hunt, you know, that when they do that, you know. And I believe we have yet another cast winner coming up, another dog that came up in positive points. Rick, tell us who we've got here. Well, we've got the cast winner of, of cast number seven, and it's a Grand Night Champion Get Gone Jenna, a four-year-old Trent Walker female, owned by Cheyenne Cummings and uh, his son-in-law, Tyler Compton. Tyler, how'd it go out there tonight? Uh, it went good. Um, you know, the little scar female, uh, she strikes for 100 there out of the truck. And uh, mine left barking. I waited, struck, ended up striking for a quarter. She trees a coon. Um, you know, it came down to the wire. I ended up treeing a couple coons and scar treed a coon there. And, and uh, scar's treed there at the end of the cast. Uh, props to J.R. Gray um, being a pretty honest fella. And, and uh, I came out on top, scar ended up having a, a circle tree. We ended up treeing five coons, I think. Um, dogs look, looked real good. Uh, all of them did. Every one of them ended up training a coon by themselves. And uh, the guide, beautiful spot, guys. Um, it's awesome. Uh, so my instinct is is that she would be a daughter of, of uh, Cheyenne Shack Dog, but you're telling me that she's uh, out of a sister to Shack. Yes, yeah, she's out of a, a female called Redneck Baby, which is a full sister to Backwoods Shack, um, and out of a bone collector male dog called Backwater Banjo. Um, she's she's kind of been special to me. She's getting ready to turn five next week, and and uh, we're excited. We, we shouldn't even be here, and it's kind of a Cinderella story, I guess, uh, but, but here we are. So elaborate a little bit about the Cinderella story. Um, so I, was, I wasn't going to be able to get off work Friday to get her to, to zones. I, I made it to Palmyra, uh, zone four, and um, my, it just didn't, wasn't going to work out to be able to get there. And I had some friends pull some strings. My father-in-law and mother-in-law both uh, helped me out big time. They got her there. And I was able to meet her at the woods uh, to hunt her that night, Friday night. Um, she, she hadn't been hunted about 20 nights, uh, had some issues going on. And, and I was able to hunt her Friday night, didn't do any good. Saturday night, I, I treated a couple coons to myself and, and made it through with four and a quarter to get here. Um, just a, a crazy deal. Like I said, there, no way I was going to make it six hours from home. And, and it, it worked out for me. And here we are. And you've won the first round of the world championship and headed into uh, the top 20, whatever we might have before the night falls. Um, what kind of special preparation? You say you didn't hunt her uh, prior to, to the zones. What, what got her to where you're at today? Uh, just consistency over her life. We, she's one of those dogs you don't have to hunt her every night. Uh, more of an in-shape factor for her. Uh, she moves around good, you know, trees, trees coons as she comes to them, kind of an ambush style. Uh, but mainly, mainly the thing for her, she's the same laid up a month versus laid up a week. It was just a deal. I wanted to have her in shape as I could, and, and uh, I wasn't able to, but here we are, and we're going to give it a run. You sure are. Congratulations. Thank so you'll you. be back here tomorrow night at Yes, five. sir. Thank you. <clears throat> there you go, guys. Um, another walker female. I'll tell you. Track of the number of dogs that aren't walkers that we've seen so far. Is that three? 
four, I believe. Four. Yep. Yep. And I believe we're going to see a few more. Um, I see some things here. I see some really good and some really bad on this score sheet. First of all, the really good that I see is we got four dogs here that all put up positive points. And also five coons we're seeing. So, you know, we're seeing a lot of game here in this. Uh, Got to give a shout-out to Eli Towater, the guy who obviously did a very good job of putting these guys in an area. I, I don't think we've seen another cast where we had five positives. They, uh, this cast was a very competitive cast. Each dog treed a raccoon, and Jenna ended up treeing two. And honestly, she's... She's been one of my picks to advance really, really far in this hunt. Um, she's a pretty consistent dog. Um, obviously, you heard the story on the, you know, on the just barely getting her to the zones and that kind of thing. And I talked to uh, Tyler earlier, and uh, you know, uh, her, um, uh, her, I, I believe her sire, and I have to go back and look, but I believe her sire was a dog that uh, placed really, really top in the Shag Attack dog, uh, uh, placed. Uh, second or something like that a few years ago so she's bred up right and uh you know hey she got struck for a quarter twice and treed two raccoons and the others treat one apiece normally that's a recipe for a win and uh so absolutely uh look good yeah strong yeah. performance here came away again another close one um all the dogs in positive points 75 points separating the winner and the second place dog in this cast. Now, I said I saw some good and some bad here, actually. Uh, the, the bad really was, uh, unfortunately, second in this cast, only 75 points behind. But it looks like my pick, Scar, out of the, the pick em is not going to move forward. I'm sure Rick's going to have a blast with that and something to say about it here in a little well, bit. Well, we've, we've had to hear it now. You've got about, a lot to say if you months. guys are looking <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Rick does have a lot to say. So, Rick, why don't you tell us first a lot about this dog that's up on the bench. I'm sure these well, guys... Well, we're looking at the winner of Cash 22 here and uh, Grand Knight Champion R&D Tree Shaken Jed. And uh, I'm standing here with the handler, Bryce Matthews, and co-owner, Brian McDaniel, co-owned with uh, Chris Hatfield, you were telling me, Bryce. Yes, so this dog just changed hands in the last two weeks or so, something to that effect. Yes, sir, at Autumn Oaks. Uh, I handled Jed at Autumn Oaks, and Chris and Brian had just bought him at Autumn Oaks, and uh, now we're, we're here. And so. here you are, first-round winners of the World Championship. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about your first round tonight. Uh, it was good. The three dogs jammed a tree right out of the truck, uh, took a hundred and... 50 on that tree. Uh, Jed split off and treated his own coon. Uh, leading the cast at 375 and he come treat again. I felt pretty good about it so I put him on the paper and uh, he actually ended up leaving that tree. Took 125 minus on that and uh, I, I really, my stomach, it sunk. I thought we were done right there. Uh, other dog went on and treated another coon by herself and uh, Jed luckily his mouth carried him out and uh, we got him treated in over a mile at the end of the hunt and went into him and he had a coon for the win. So. That sounded exciting. I bet you were feeling the blues right there for a little bit. Oh, I was sick to my stomach. I told Brian, I said, I think I just threw it away, treating him in too long. I let him sit there treat, and I mean, he sat there treat for over three minutes, and I don't, I don't know why he left. I don't know what happened, but, you know, he, he come through at the end and did what he's supposed to do and treated raccoons. Well, he's a dog. That's right. Yeah. Um, tell me about the zone. What, what zone did you guys go to? Uh, we went to Palmyra, Missouri, and uh, we doubled up one Friday and Saturday there. Wow. What kind of scores did you have out there? I uh, brought in 300 on Friday and 350, I believe, on Saturday. So, Brian, how uh, how did you come about to get this dog then? I, I've, I've drawn the dog twice in two other hunts when Greg Maynard was hunting him and looked good both times, and Chris called me and told me that he was for sale, and I said, well, let's get him, let's get him bought. So we did, and knew he had a truck ticket on him in the PKC, and he called me and said, hey, this dog's qualified for the zones. Do you want to go? And I said, well, I can't make it. And he said, well, I've got a handler that's, that's got him there. I said, well, let's, let's keep going with him. He doubled up, and Chris called, and this is 25 minutes from the house. Chris said, do you want to hunt him? I said, no, sir, I'm going with the man that's got him here. So hope we keep rolling. Did you go to the woods tonight, or did you stay at the truck? You went to the woods? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Had a good hunt. And did your handler perform like he should have? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We both was kind of sunk a little bit after he left that tree, but like he said, he did what he's supposed to and sunk in there and treated another one. So, Tell me a little bit about his bloodline. Uh, he's got a coma on the top side, and I'll be honest, I don't know what he's out of on the bottom side. I have, I've only hunted him five times, so we're a pretty new team, actually. <laughs> so much for preparation, huh? Yeah, here we are. Here we are at the World Championship. We've hunted him five times, counting tonight. Yep, this is it. This is the fifth cast, and we're going to keep on rolling. You ain't lying. I I'm happy for you guys. Be Thank back you. here tomorrow evening. You made it to the top 20 at least. Thank you. Thank you.
Good seeing you. Tell you what, Steve, see a lot of excitement there. Young man that, you know, fifth time was the charm coming in here. Had a very, very strong night here uh, against a strong field that was spread out from all over the country. We've got dogs in this cast from Illinois, Georgia, um, Kentucky, and I believe Virginia. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, and these guys came in from Tifton, Georgia. You know, we talked a little bit about the heat here. Uh, I think that that definitely plays a role. And you've got a guy that's been hunting, preparing for this, and he's from Tifton, Georgia. I don't know if you know where it is. I've actually been there before. It is South Georgia, so it's hot down there. you got to believe that dog was used to these kind of conditions and prevailed. Yeah, you know, it's down where they used to hold a winter classic for years, so I've hunted a bunch down around there. And now with me being in uh, Florida, I go up and hunt just north of Tifton about an hour. So I guarantee he was prepared. Uh, he was prepared coming in here. And, you know, you look on the score, here's this thing that stands out to me. He was one of them that was able to overcome a minus. Yeah. You know, that's the second or third one tonight now. So I guarantee you them guys are going to go back and they're going to feel pretty uh, pretty fortunate, you know. Uh, the minus obviously made it a little bit closer, but as you can see, and I as he shared, uh, scored a raccoon right at the very end of the hunt to win the win the cast, and that's what makes this hunt so exciting. That you know, you heard, you know, you you could hear it, you know, having to have, you know, having to have that to to pull that off. It's just it's, it's awesome. It's yeah. really awesome. And the other cool thing about it is, you know, he kept his cool. You heard him talk about the fact that he felt like that minus was a self-inflicted wound, but he didn't let that get him down. He stuck in there with it and pulled it out in the end, and so. So very happy young man and I guess his wife up there with him we want to congratulate them and also want to congratulate uh, our next dog that's made it to the bitch Rick who we got here well we got a no name here I'm standing here with world-renowned Jeff Rickliff and uh, he's got a dog here called Strix hard times hobo and uh, he's owned by John Strickland and uh, um, Doug Galbraith a three-year-old train walker male and uh, Jeff, tell me a little bit about your hunt this evening. Uh, we had a great hunt. Um, we had a guy that's been around for a long time guide us. Um, he won the PKC World Champion back in Championship back in 1997, Brian Turner. So he's been around a long time. I seen you and Brian walk out. Yeah, I, f I forgot that he was on your. Yeah, and um, took us to a great spot. Huge, huge, huge bottom. Just I. Uh, I scrolled out on the bird's eye and I didn't see a field anywhere. It's timber for, I think it's 20,000 acres. But, um, so yeah, we, we had, um, we had, uh, Larry Wilcox's English dog pride. We had a dog out of the country dog named Molly. And then we had a dog out of Kansas. Um, can't remember his son was his name. So, um, pride struck for a hundred. I struck for 75. Um, and then son struck and then Molly struck. So, Son got treed, had a circle tree. I got treed, had a coon. Um, Molly got treed, had a coon. Son backed her. And I had cut back loose, and mine just kept going and going and going and going. And I'm thinking, he's going to get out of hearing. And at one time, he was over a mile, and I thought, I'll never hear him. And I actually, I could hear him. And they made a couple circle trees here and there. And the sun dog got treed again and had a coon to go ahead of me by a quarter. And when we pulled him off, I treated him. He was .77 at that time. We'd got close enough where I could hear him real good. So we go to my, go into mine. Um, the sun dog strikes again. And with 30 seconds left in the honey comes treed about 100 yards right-handed of us. I said, it's just my luck. I'm beat, you know. And we go to me. I got a uh, huge persimmon tree with a coon in it. And we came back to him, and he had a big den. So that's how... I ended up, you know, with 350, he ended up with a two and a quarter. So if he had had a coon, he'd have beat me by a quarter. But, well, that's how the, that cast went. We had a great cast, no, not one bit of trouble. Um, Brian did a great job guiding and judging, and all the guys were fantastic to hunt with. So. so you made it here through the Portland, Indiana zone. Tell me a little bit about that weekend. Uh, Friday night, mine did not look very good. I mean, he, he didn't look horrible. He's just kind of out there, treat a coon, treat a den, got in the ground a little bit, ran too much. I was pretty disgusted now. The next night, he ran for one hour and four minutes, and I was ready to go catch him and just give him a little training for future hunts. I was so disgusted. But he come treed, and um, long story short, he treed three as fast as I could turn him loose, had five and a quarter. You stay in that one spot and treed three, or did you pick up and move? Uh, it, was great, it was a good big bottom. We couldn't move. We had dogs scattered everywhere. So, yeah, when it, they had treed a couple coons before mine ever got treed, and um, 
when it's said and done, I had five and a quarter close dog to me. I had 175 in the last 56 minutes. So he did look good the last 56 minutes of that cast. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about his breeding. Okay. He's a, he, you know a lot about both sides of him. And um, the top side would be Josie Wales. Jeremy Michaelis owns him now. Um, Mike Gilbert raised and trained his daddy, Josie Wales. And he goes clear back to UKC world champion Big D. Um, on the top side. Then he's off of a little female named Casey that um, she's off of, her mama's name's Casey and, and she's she was a mama like shot through the world that won the PKC okay, Nationals. Yeah. And she actually goes back to Russ Beller's breeding. Um, so yeah, he's Beller bred on the bottom and top basically. I guess you'd call Big D Beller breeding too. I mean. Yeah, so. sure. So you've been here before, watched the, uh, there's no nervousness with you I'm assuming. No, I've, I've been in many, many, many top 20s of world hunts and everything, but I have not bought one, so or won one. So, yeah, I can't <laughs> one. I've tried. No. But, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lifelong dream because I've won the Nationals and the Super Stakes. Right. I've won a lot of things, but I have not won a world hunt yet. Mr. Burkhalter sitting right over there judged me in the final four of the UKC world hunt in what year, Steve, was it? 2000, 2002? 2003 or two. two. It was 2002, two. yep. So I was hunting hardwood Henry and led that over halfway through and then mine got out of pocket and they treed three or four while mine was gone old henry yeah so i've been here um but i haven't won one so it's definitely it would fulfill my dreams to win a world hunt and you told me today you're 59 59 i'll be 60 in february and just had back surgery so and i'm a new man i mean i can get around now so you don't look new to me i can tell, well, you, I can tell you i feel new <laughs> i don't look it but there you go guys another another favorite here uh, Jeff Rickless and Hobo. Appreciate it. Yeah, and another treeing walker that we had. And I'll tell you, Steve, we, we probably need to get Jeff in the booth with us at some point. That guy did a tremendous job. Uh, it obviously must be one cool customer because he just totally recounted the hunt. And it looks like they had a good one. Again, a lot of game. Four, four uh, raccoons were seen tonight and scored in this cast. So a strong cast and... Uh, and really you know, come for him. yeah, and and I've I've hunted with the hobo dog, and uh, he's he is the kind of dog that you can hunt through the week and thoroughly enjoy hunting him, and he's obviously a pleasure to hunt for him in the hunts. And uh, Jeff's been around these hunts for a long time, and I told him the other day he he's due to win one of these. He's been knocking on the door, and like he shared, I I I did judge him at the 2000 uh, I think two uh, world hunt, kind of got a misfortune timeout call, and kind of. M mess things up there or whatever but i guarantee he's uh, he'll get up tomorrow uh, go play around the golf and he'll be ready for tomorrow night's hunt uh like another hunt you know it's uh he uh he's he sure had some good dogs and he knows how to keep one right and the dog that he's hunting is very capable of winning this hunt very capable yeah and you can you can obviously see that he's also got the confidence the dog is running very very strong uh had a very strong group here that he prevailed in so that was a that was a very very strong cast winner right yeah. there he treed two and and the two other dogs treat a coon apiece and uh you know the, again that's a recipe for a w here yeah and he said he had a lot of woods there out there also i mean so uh, Their guide tonight. He's been around the hunt for a long time, and uh, knows. He won the world. He won the uh, world hunt there. Probably, probably late nineties. Yeah, I believe probably. it would have been. Yep. He would have won the world yeah, hunt. Brian I can guarantee he put him in a spot uh, where all four of them had a very capable chance of winning this. Yeah, so. Brian's you know been around for a long, long time. Yeah, sure spent a lot of time working out that piece of property and getting him where he wanted to be, and it paid off. And absolutely. I tell you what, we've got another dog coming up to the bench here, and you know. My, my pick, Scar, didn't make it, but if I was going to have to pick a dog here, this is certainly one of the hometown favorites. Shout out, my really good friend, and I'm super happy to see this guy. And a black and tan on the bench. Rick, throw it over to you, buddy. Yeah, we're, we're standing here with a, with a black and tan, Muddy River Ripsaw, owned by Corey Jeffers and uh, Chad Smith. Corey, tell me a little bit about your cast tonight. Well, we had a good cast, uh, just uh, rip. Did what he did, stayed by himself, and treed four times, seen two of them. Could have, wish we could have seen a couple more, but he he pulled it off. How many coons did you see overall in your cast? Uh, we treated, scored five. Scored five, another good cast. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about his style. Uh, he's just tight on the ground, and stays by himself, and good about having a coon, and loves to stay treated. 
And he's just three years old. Yes, sir. Just turned three. Okay. What's the story? How, how long have you and Chad had him together? Well, so we, uh, we, he was, we, we made the cross that we own his mother. Okay. We All right. So you've had him since a pup? Yeah, we were, we, well, no, we, he was the stud puppy that got away from us, but we bought him back at about 14, 12 months old, something like that. Uh, but uh, we was at the top 100 with his mother last year. So made it to the top 100 with his mother. So uh, he's just a, he's a nice hound, tight on the ground, but likes to be by himself with a coon. He looks like he's barrel full of energy. He sure is, yes sir, he is. Tell me a little bit about your zone when you, to get here. Uh, Palmyra had a real good hunt. I mean, honestly, both nights, uh, really ripped, run away with both of his cash and did a good job. Win his cash both nights? Both nights, he had uh, 300. <coughs> Three and a quarter first night, 500 second night, really looked good. Uh, just, just good, did a, did a fine job. Chad, you back up handle this evening? No, what I hate is that Jay Paul picked a second, not first. I noticed that. I, I know him and no, him no, 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 no. You <laughs> weren't in the top six. You were my pick from the very beginning, bro. Oh, I had to work. I judged. <laughs> that is not right, okay. Chad. All right. I seen you had your hunting stuff on. I wasn't sure if you were able to go or not. Yeah, no, I judged. So. All right. Um, so you've made it. This far, yes, round one of the world hunt in your book. Yes, um, what's your strategy for tomorrow night? Let's hope he keeps on doing what he's been doing. Yeah, he he's he's bouncing around like he's uh, ready to go for another ready, round. He's ready to go right now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so you guys made the cross on him, and his sire was uh, Tom Lee's big boy. And it went back to. Uh, Cooper Storm and I, and Lawton Robinson Stock a Dog, Black Bandit. Lawton Robertson. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well yep. known name. We yeah. actually was going to breed Josie to some Ike semen, which was Boy's Daddy. And when I got the uh, Josie over there, she was too far gone. And the vet says, We can't, uh, we, we will breed her, but we can't guarantee you some pups. So immediately I left the, the vet. And called Jeff, or Jeff was with me actually. We just took her over to Jeff's and bred her to the son of Ike. Um, so you made a live breeding when you realized you couldn't. Right, and we got it. We got there's only two alive, and now he's a grand knight, and the and the sister likes one we're making grand knight, and uh, she's at home. She Wouldn't it have been nice to have six or seven in that cross? Yes, sir. She didn't. Make, we were both up at Palmyra, but she uh, she fell flat, but he didn't. Well, congratulations, and uh, like J. Paul says, you're a hometown favorite, I guess. Yeah. Appreciate Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. There you have it, your your neighbor, and he give me a little bit of slack there, man. <laughs> and well, that, and I can't believe you wouldn't have picked him to win. Well, no, I didn't get to pick out of Don't that. We were talking up. about Don't. the top six, <laughs> Don't folks. Back up. Don't that back dog up wasn't that. in the top six. I said this this dog wasn't in the top six, but that was my pick overall. Did I not you, say you did, that? I, I will have to. I, and, and we're just Rick's just gonna have to deal with it. You did say that. You did share that that uh, he was a local hometown favorite, and because we talked about it earlier tonight. Yeah. And uh, most certainly, uh, you know, he's still in this thing. And hey, you know what? He's got a, he's got a good a shot as that. You can look in this card. It's real. I mean, it's simple. They scored on five raccoons, and he treed two of them. Oh yeah. And yes. uh, you know, I mean, a couple of the other dogs each treed a coon apiece. Or there's another dog that treed two. But again, if you look at it, there's them there's them minus points. Yeah. And uh, no minus points. No, no yeah, minus dude, points. That's what's and, and 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 the other dog pulled a minus point. And you know, again. That's the difference in these hunts. You know, at, at, you're seeing a lot of these casts tonight that are coming in. Uh, what's winning it for these guys is they're getting the better part, or they're getting the, they're get, they're treeing two raccoons and they're keeping their nose clean. And that's winning a lot of these casts that that don't pull that minus. So absolutely, it's uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. And, and Corey is my buddy, but there are two things that I really want to point out because I don't know a lot of these dogs, but I talked to Corey uh, quite a bit. We've both been very excited, obviously, about having this dog. Or having this event here, but you know, Corey has been knocking on the door of all of the major events, and one of the things that he's told me several times that I see right here on the sheet, you know, he said, "Jay Paul, the thing that I love about this dog is the fact that uh, he may not always be the first to strike, but once he strikes, he runs hard and he beats them to the tree." He's going to win the foot race, and I've had him tell me that several times. I'm looking at the scorecard, and uh, that first of all, five raccoons seen tonight and scored, and on four occasions, 
Uh, he, two of them are circles. They're not four out of the five. On actually, four occasions, he was the first dog to 100%. make the tree. I mean, he made he made he made five. He was on five trees, and that in four of them was first trees. Yeah. Now, obviously, a couple of them got circled. And again, we talked. We discussed that earlier tonight. That there could be a raccoon there. You not see it. You know. So absolutely, Corey no. He definitely knows his dog, and I tell you, that's you know not just because he's hometown, but young dog Corey knows that dog. I, I think he and Chad. Uh, are going to go far. And Chad, I did pick you guys to be the winner in the end. He just not in those hair. six. So <laughs> there you go, guys. All right, well, we got another dog on the bench. So let's throw it over to Rick. Well, it kind of looks like deja vu here. Uh, two of these guys were here just a few minutes ago, and they're back again. Uh, we got Blake Robertson in the uh, center here and Ron Chapman. They own Flat Lick's Twisted Sister, and she's a cast winner here on uh, – Cast 17 and handled by Clark Canterbury. Clark, tell me a little bit about your first round here tonight. Well, she uh, she got under a coon right out of the truck, last strike, first tree. Uh, cut her back loose, uh, dogs made a circle tree, and uh, she ended up under another coon. Uh, after the circle tree, uh, strike got opened back up. She gets struck back in for 100, trees another coon, and that pretty much ended it right there. How many coons did you guys score on this evening? She treated only two. Only two that was seen, and, and she's on them. Yes, sir. All right. And you got here by going to which zone? Uh, Queen City, Texas. Tell me a little bit about that weekend. Well, she treated a coon on Friday night, scored 150-plus. Uh, Saturday night ended up getting beat, but the uh, Friday night 150 got her in. We were, we were the last dog in. Wow. Last one. Wow. Um, now, on my paperwork, it shows she's not UKC titled yet. I think this made her night. This makes her a night champion. All right, this win here, this cast win here, would make her a night champion. I think so. Yes, yes, sir. All right, um, Ron, tell me a little bit about what's going on here. Welcome back. Well, we the Lord's blessed us greatly. That's the main thing. And this dog here, Joe, uh, called me about it. He really, really liked her last year at the Super Stakes, and says, Ron, uh, I'm by this dog. I said, I. He said, you want half of her? And I said, yes. So we ended up with her, and she's she's been smoking ever since. Joe keeps her hunted up good, and he does an awesome job with her, and Clark's been hunting her lately, and, and I mean, he's did excellent with her also. I, th I, I think that tomorrow for tomorrow night, we're going to do a lot of praying and thanking the good Lord for tonight. That's the main thing. You've had an awesome night. You guys have, have, have entered two and won with two. You can't do no better. You can't do no better. Tell me a little bit about her style. Uh, she, she's, she's really just a – she ain't real flashy with nothing she does, but she leaves you. She's always moving forward. And, and, she, and, and when, she, when she gets part, she likes to have a coon. And, and, she, and just about everybody that hunts with her just cannot believe her mouth. You know, she's just got a, a wicked mouth. And uh, – she, she ain't nothing, nothing really stands out, really. She just seems to have them coons, you know, when she gets treated. How long have you guys had her now? A year. Oh, a little over a year. I got her at the baby stakes last year, and then this year we got her in the semifinals of the super stakes this year. So this past super stakes was a year. Okay. And been doing fine with her ever since? Ever since. Yeah. She's did all. Ron, I got to ask you, how old are you this weekend? be 80 in December. 80. Congratulations to you, sir. You. You've put together a good team here, that's for sure. Yeah. The good Lord's put together. I, I hear I you. give him all the credit. All right, Ron. We'll see you guys tomorrow evening. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good luck to you the rest of the way out. Tell you what, Steve. Ron, you he got some pretty this stiff competition, all, too. And this was a very young dog uh, making the trip up from Louisiana, two years old, going up against a couple of seasoned Grand Night champions. But this is one of our, our bigger margins. I mean, this dog ran really strong tonight. Well, I mean, if you look here, uh, they scored on two raccoons, and he had 375 on two. And the only way, I mean, the best way you do that is get 125. Uh, First tree on two trees, and that's what he did. He they scored on two raccoons, and he treed both of them. Yeah, he made the most of that. And, uh, and I can tell you, you know, this is a a young two year old dog. They've been pretty consistent with her, but I tell you what's the really cool story about this is uh, Ron. I know Ron personally. We was partners, obviously, with the Babe Pimo for a few years. Could not ask for a better partner. Got to know Ron good uh, over them a couple of years. 
he truly is one of the good guys of the sport. He really is. You know, he, uh, uh, you know, he just. He, he's just, you know, he's been knocking at the door. Uh, you know, he he hunted, he hunted back in the 70s, uh, late 70s and early 80s in these hunts. So he's been at this for a long time, and uh, you know, I'd love to see him. Uh, I'd love to see him make a huge dent in this. Uh, and he's he's got two dogs uh, that are very capable of doing that. So uh, you know, again, uh, really a dominating performance by uh, by what it looks like on here. You know, super running. A guy that's been around for a long time, and the thing that really, really struck me was the fact that, you know, he still obviously has the excitement, the love for the sport, and, and the passion, and you know, great seeing that here. Uh, looks like for the first time in a little while, we've actually got an empty bench and a little bit of break in the action, so we're going to take advantage of that to uh, visit some of our sponsors here. We're not going to be long, uh, gone long, guys. We still have dogs Arriving at the back door, only a few left to go. So just a few minutes, we'll be right back here to the 2022 UKC World Coonhound Championship. Did you know that your monthly subscription to Coonhound Bloodlines comes packed with upcoming UKC event information, official UKC event results, and articles of interest about coon hunting? It sure does. Read about the top competition hunters and hounds, as well as stories about pleasure hunting and bench show hounds. Subscribe today or renew online at shop.ukcdogs.com. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity. Support digestive health and give him a training edge to one day flush, point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count with game-changing puppy fuel. Yukonuba Premium Performance Puppy Pro. Guess what? We have a podcast. The all-new United Kennel Club podcast will not only feature great guests, living the sporting dog life, but also rules and sport updates. Tune into the Hunting Ops podcasts with Alan Gingrich and Trevor Wade to hear the latest coonhound rules and updates, beagle rules and updates, and all breaking news about UKC Hunting Ops programs. Hear it right here first. Subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss out. It's been an absolute unbelievable journey that, and what we do from a, you know, from a small little company to a multi-million dollar corporation. It's pretty cool. We enjoy what we do. We service our customers very well. We come and sit here and repair a product for people on the spot where they don't have to mail it and wait to get it back. We just take pride in doing every aspect of the business, not just selling the light, but taking care of the customer. The United Kennel Club, when I was growing up in my teens, I started hunting in the uh, in some of their competition hunts. Mainly, me and my dad, we'd just go and enjoy ourselves and do that. And I got a little bit older and ended up becoming a Master of Hounds, bench show judge for them. And I've just been involved with them. I've known for years most all the guys that have come through and been in the hunting ops portion of it, you know. and always had a close relationship with with most of them i mean business is business and i understand you got to do business but there's nothing wrong with being friends while you do a business if you can like being a master of hounds i've worked a lot of hunts for a lot of people i've worked a lot of major events black and tan days different things uh, i've judged down here at the winter classic if, if they need help i'll go there and do it if if i can if there's any way i can and never charge a dime and then giving back to the hunters, you know, the hunters have kept me up for the last 25 years. And uh, I would be absolutely crazy not to give back to the hunters. You don't, you know, you, you don't bite the hand that feeds you, you try to take care of it. You know, you just, you take care of your business that way and the customers will take care of you 
if you take care of them. Welcome back to the 2022 United Kennel Club World Coonhound Championship coming from my hometown here in Dyersburg, Tennessee. Tell you what, as we come back here, uh, really got to give a shout out to our friends at Bright Eyes. Just saw them there on the break. And Bright Eyes has been a tremendous supporter of the Coonhound world, the United Kennel Club for many, many years. So we appreciate the folks at Bright Eyes and the tremendous support that they've given us over the years and look forward for many, many more years in that partnership. Um, about to have our next dog come in. And you know, while we were at the break, one of the things that I noticed, Steve, is I'm sure people at home watching this are hearing it. The buzz is really starting to pick up here. I'm sure there's probably a lot of background noise going on. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of guys that, that have come back in here. We've only got six or seven dogs left. And even though it's uh, after 1 a.m. in the morning, man, Steve, the buzz is still going on and the excitement's oh, yeah. still here in the room. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we're still waiting on a few winners coming in. They're actually coming through the door as we're speaking. Uh, we're going to get to talk to these guys. But, uh, man, I tell you what, what an amazing event already uh, so far this evening. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just there's a lot of good dogs advancing. You Amen. Know, and uh, one we're going to is uh, sure enough good enough to win this thing. So for sure. Let's don't hesitate anymore. Rick, who do we got here on the bench? We got one of the fan favorites here on the bench. Uh, cast number nine, your winner is Grand Night Champion Snooky's Cookie, owned by Justin Davidson and uh, his father, Stephen Davidson, and handled by Cody Carter and uh, backup handled by Doug Cundiff. Cody, tell me a little bit about tonight's hunt. Hi, it was a rough one. It's not one you call home and brag about, but it was good enough. <laughs> How many coons did you guys score on? Uh, we treed two coons. Me and the rock dog treed one apiece and took a little minus along the way. So you had a low score to advance tomorrow night, sounds like. 25 plus. <laughs> well, there's been world hunts one on that, so. Yep. That's take them how we get them. Take them how you get them. Uh, tell me a little bit about her style. Uh, I mean, she'll tree any kind of coon. She looks better in coons. I mean, if you put her in coon, she can really hurt you. But if she's got to go find one, she will. Yeah, and you've had her off and on for how long now? About a year. And done quite a bit of winning with her? Yeah, we've been pretty fortunate. Um, make the top 100 with her at the, at the TOC. Yep. And uh, won the early round there. Had an early round at the finals. Yep. Yep, I remember that. Um, and then you guys went to Portland, I'm assuming? Yeah, we were at the Portland zone. Uh, we doubled up up there. We were high scoring dog of zone three. And how many points you have up there? 11.75. I think scored 5.50 on Friday and six and a quarter Saturday. So she can win with a big score and win with a small score. She usually finds a way to pull them out. <laughs> um, is uh, Justin and his dad coming up this weekend or not? If we get to Saturday, they'll be up. Uh, they, they had things going on, but they wouldn't miss that. All right. And the grand, uh, grandkids, Doug, they're back home, I guess. They'll be here Saturday if we get that far. I hear you. <laughs> we'll have to get some padded walls in here if we bring them in here for sure. Congratulations on your win, guys. Thanks, Rick. See you tomorrow night. Thank you, so there you have it. What, uh, the second second fan favorite, I guess, for the hunt? Yeah, another dog out of our, our top five or six since there was a tie that advanced and a dog that uh i hate to say it but i, I do believe that rick uh was pretty high on cookie coming in here and man tell us what you're seeing here on this sheet i mean this is one dog in the positives and only about 25 points what do you make of that steve well you know again um sometimes where you're hunting at the conditions uh you know sometimes they're just not walking and uh you know, uh, you, you can see here, uh, you know, a few of them, you know, left trees. I, obviously, that produces a minus. A few of them made empties, uh, which produce minus. And, uh, you know, you heard what he said. You know, he felt very fortunate advancing through this cast. And, you know, this world hunt, you got to string uh, together several cast wins, six of them usually, uh, to do it. And you're going to have to win one of these type of casts. And, you know, I can guarantee you, uh, Cody feels really good right now of getting that cast out of the way. You know, and uh, hey, this little female, you can't take nothing away from her. Hey, she's a, she was a second favorite dog pick to win this thing for a reason. And it's her consistency. You know, this little female is five years old. 
Uh, she's been knocking at the door on a lot of these big hunts. And uh, you can't keep them good ones out very yeah. long. Yeah, I mean, and, You and can't keep them good ones out very long. Yeah, and something know? noteworthy, too, is uh, of our pick em, one and two, a uh, little bit of money and Cookie are both in there. I know there's three out of the top five. Or yeah, three out of the top six, Babe's also in I can't remember the other two that was on there now. I'm drawing Ivy a blank. And, uh, Scar. Yeah, and Scar. Scar's yeah, out for Ivy sure. And Scar, Ivy and Scar are both out. I know that. But I know that Babe and a little bit of money and uh, uh, Cookie are all in. So them ones that picked them to win it, I guarantee you they're tickled pink right now because they know they're going to they have another chance to get some more points. So for sure, absolutely. Oh, and no doubt about it. You know, and, and even though – Cookie did just scratch through, I'll tell you what, on more than one occasion, a number of occasions, we've seen a dog that barely made it through the first series come back and, and put an exclamation point at the end with the big win, make it all the way to the finals. So, you know, even though they didn't have the greatest night tonight, they lived to play another day. And now, you know, they're down from 103 dogs to beat to 25 or less moving into round two. So, uh, congratulations to them for moving on, and uh, congratulations to our next dog. We've got another one here on the bench. Let's hear about it. Well, guys, I'm standing here with uh, cast winner 16 and uh, Snooky's Jersey Girl, owned by uh, Jack Bingham and Jacob Bingham and Justin Boblett. And Justin, you're doing the handling on the dog, correct? Yes, yes, I am. Uh, tell me a little bit about this evening's hunt. Uh, we uh, we had. Uh, four females in a, one cast, and uh, uh, I got I got uh, one on a tiebreaker, um, which scored on three coons, and uh, I had more circle points than the other three dogs. So two of you had the same score, but you just had more circle points to break the tie. Yep. yep. All right. And did you handle her in the uh, zones to get here? Yes, I did. Where did you guys go? Uh, Palmyra, Missouri. Tell me a little bit about that weekend. Uh, Friday night, uh, I got beat uh, by a black dog. Uh, he looked really good. And then uh, uh, Saturday night, we didn't have a very good hunt the first hour, but second hour, we, we treated three coon, and uh, she treated two to herself and got a cast win. And that was enough to get you here? Yep. And you won the first round of the world hunt? Yep. What's your feelings about it? I uh, got good feelings. Yeah. Got good feelings. Uh, so how much hunting have you done competition-wise? Uh, last three years I've done quite a bit, but this this past probably eight months I've kind of slowed down a little bit. Uh, I just had a, a kid, so it's kind of slowed me down a little bit. Had to do it to all of us for sure. How long have you been hunting her? Uh, probably two, two and a half years. A little bit about her breeding? Uh, she's uh, Snooky and Fine Line Cooler. Uh, Causalman, J um, yes. Brian. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the male? Uh, fine. Cooler 2 is owned by uh, Brandon's dad. Oh, he's Charlie Creek bred. Charlie Creek, okay. All right. All right. So, Jack, you're normally leading the red dog around. Tell us a little. Most of the time. Most of the time, for sure. So, what's going on there? I ain't colorblind. <laughs> I think I own, between me and my partners, we probably own five or six walkers. Okay. Uh, probably eight or ten red dogs. Did you hunt any of the red dogs in the zones, make it to the zones, or anything like that? I had one. Then my good female bugs come into heat, so I didn't get to hunt her. Okay, I and you? Handle, I had somebody else handle the red male. And you and Bugs made it to the top 100, and then plus that at the TOC last year. Yeah, I think we've been in the top 100 twice with Bugs. Okay. TOC twice with, with Bugs. Yeah, very good. All right, so what's your plan for tomorrow night? Just strike a tree and call her as she is. Been working for you so far. Yeah. Okay, congratulations, Thank guys. You. There you go. There's your another winner. Tell you what, this was one of the most interesting scorecards, Steve, that I've seen come across the desk yet. Um, you know, you heard him say he won on the circle points. What we had here was three dogs in the positive, but they all put up a score of 150 plus. So explain to us how he made it through and the other two didn't, please, Steve. Well, on the very first tree of the night, what, uh, what, it, what it appears, uh, what, what on them for the tiebreaker is uh, he ended up having 100 and 100 and a quarter on. We talked earlier tonight about circle points. They don't really go for you, don't really go against you. But tonight, that was the difference. He had two and a quarter on a circle tree. In other words, they went in and couldn't find the raccoon. There was enough cover there that it would circle it up. And the other dog had 200 on a circle. Uh, so the very first strike of the night that ended up both being circled is ultimately what was the tiebreaker. Uh, you know, that 25 points was the tiebreaker on that circle points. They both treat a coon. 
Yeah. And uh, but that twenty-five point circle is what won it for him. So doesn't happen a lot, but I can guarantee you, uh, you know, it did there, and he's tickled pink on it. I'll tell you a really interesting uh, stat on it. It was really pretty cool. So Jersey Girl is out of uh, Mr. Clean Snooky. Mr. Clean obviously was a past world champion. And uh, the cookie female that was just up here is a granddaughter to Snooky. So, you know, so uh, they, so Snooky has a daughter and a granddaughter and, uh, you know, back to back these dogs advancing. So that's pretty neat. You yeah, know? yeah, that so. is. And, you know, and, and another thing I want to point out here before we go to the next dog, I think we've got another one coming up to the bench, but beyond the circle points earlier tonight we were talking about the fact that with the thermal imaging it's all about giving the dog the benefit of the doubt well circle points work the same way so if you're kind of still struggling with this concept you know this dog put up more circle points than other dogs and that's giving the dog the benefit of the doubt in that situation where they get the circle there was an extenuating factor maybe there were too many leaves on the tree maybe there was a hollow in the tree where the coon could have disappeared and they just couldn't find it so in the case of a tie like that, they're going back to the circles to give that dog the benefit of the doubt, doing everything they can to, you know, be the fairest that they can be to the dog. And that's the way that they advanced on. And so now we've got our next dog that's advanced on here to the bench. Rick, uh, we got another dog that is not a treeing walker here. Tell us about. That is correct. This one's not a treeing walker and it's also not a black and tan. It's a crossbred night champion, big Valley Ranger owned by Joe McGraw and handled by Joe. Uh, his backup handler tonight is Randy Bogle. Uh, Joe, tell me a little bit about your cast this evening. I uh, had a wonderful cast, uh, plenty of coons, Had everybody got along, it was wonderful. Uh, he uh, just got by himself twice, that's all he needed, had the coon two times. Had the coon both times? Yep. And uh, how many coons did you guys score on? You well, think? we scored uh, on four coons. He treed two, another female treed two, and we saw about six or seven setting up probably. Wow, you were in them. We were in them. Definitely. Was it action-packed or kind of slow, uh, or what's going on down, out there? Come down to the last tree, uh, time was out, he was treed, and it was either she had, she had it won, if he had a coon, he had it won, and he had a coon, he won it. Very good. So tell me a little bit about what zone you went to and how that worked out. Uh, we went to the Pilot Mountain Zone 5, uh, had a wonderful cast on Friday night, done the same thing, got by himself two times, had the coon, got enough to get him through. Saturday night, we kind of laid back because we felt we, you know, we didn't want to mess up, get scratched anything, you know, do nothing. And he, uh, he just acted, you know, acted good and just stayed out of trouble and we, we got through. Very good, very good. So tell the fans at home what he's out of. He's a uh, trim walker on the top. He's out of Chad Kennedy's uh, uh, voo dog. They call him his night in rage voo dog. And uh, on the bottom side, he's out of uh, Alan Sparks' breeding a leopard, American leopard hound. Okay. All right. Tell us a little bit about his style. He's a dog that uh, gets by himself. He he don't like trim. You know, he, he loves to get by himself. He's, uh, he runs field edges, creeks. Uh, he gets by himself looking for that one coon, and that's how he does it. So I believe he's three years old. Three years old. And you've had him for how long? I've had him since he was a baby. Raised him. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Any strategy for tomorrow night? Just go out there and uh, just wish for the best, you know. Uh, hopefully he'll get by himself like he does. And uh, that's how that's how we win. So, Steve, that makes we, – we figured we had three crossbred dogs in the hunt this weekend. I, I think. think there was five um, – I believe there was – Five or more than three. Um, so we got two of them. Six of we them. know for sure two of them. There were six of them, two of them, and two of them have definitely advanced so far. All right. There we go. Uh, congratulations on your win. Appreciate it, sir. All right. Thank you. Good luck to you. Yeah, that, that dog is a crossbreed, uh, a really interesting cross to me. One of my favorites that we don't see here a lot uh, uh, a leopard hound, uh, American leopard. Coonhound and Walker Cross, and this was a real dog fight too. I mean, when you take a look, 25 points between uh, the winner and the dog that came in second in this cast. Yeah, and you know, uh, he treed two, and another dog uh, scored on two. Uh, he just obviously had, you know, it was struck where the other dog had pulled, my, again, the other dog had pulled uh, 125 minus in this cast. And uh, he pulled 75, so that was really the difference. Uh, one dog, you know, one dog pulled 125 minus, and he pulled a 75 minus on a on a tree call. What it appears, 
and uh, that was a 25 point difference on this so uh you know hey always pulling for them i, I always pull for uh, uh for for them you know it's it's obviously a unique cross yeah and uh you know them definitely style, one you don't see a lot yeah, of them style of dogs you know um you know them style of dogs just have the knack of pulling these casts out so uh, I'd say they got as good a shot as anyone here. Yep, did a really good job. Went over into Haywood County, so had a little bit of drive for a hunt, but came out on top. Well, I believe we've got another one here at the bench. Let's hear a little bit about them, Rick. Well, we got the winner of Cast 10, uh, Grand Knight Champion Bozo Stylish Whitey. And uh, he's owned by Buzz Lynch and Kurt Allring. Kurt's doing the handling tonight. Uh, Kurt, tell me a little bit about your first round tonight. We had a good time. We turned loose and... He kept to himself all night. He trees a two and a quarter on the first one. Don't find it's big and thick. Had a nice spot. Had some sportsmanship. A lot of times you look around, you'll see people ain't helping you shine. My cast night, everybody was gentlemen. They helped. We look. We cut him off of that. We go back to theirs. We don't find theirs. He's sitting in there about a points three or four. And got one looking down. You know, every squirrel finds an acorn, Rick. You know yeah, how it is. Sure. So was that the only one you scored on? Yeah, we walked back and forth. Yeah, that was enough, though, you know. Yeah, sure, sure. Tell me, and what zone did you go to to get here? Palmyre, right up there in my backyard. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we had a good time. I had my granddaughter with me, and we've raised this dog in the house. She's been a lot of help to me here lately. I've cracked my ribs and a bunch of stuff. She keeps old Paul calm, you know. Everybody that knows me, I have a little trouble with that. <laughs> well, I was wondering how this would go, but it's going pretty good so far. Well, yeah, they said, hey, Kurt, watch that vocabulary. I said, <laughs> I said I'm on it, Rick. I got it. I hear you. So you win one or two rounds up at Palmyra? Two. One, two rounds. Both rounds up there. Yeah. What kind of scores you have up there? Uh, just enough to get by. Two and a quarter one night and 150 one night. All you right. Know what I mean, he stays to himself. And Coons didn't move up there real good, you know. But I got Coons where I'm at, but, you know. Just knowing do what you can do, you know how it is. What's his bloodline, Kurt? He's directly off a rat, and Andy Vertel's female out there, old Leo and them, and Harry Brad. So how old is he? He's four. Four. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what's the strategy tomorrow night? Remain calm. That's not going to work for you. Yes, it's got to. It's baby. not going to work for you. Hey. I'm 60 years old and finally learned how to handle when I told Buzz about to die, you no, know what I mean? You're about out of time and you about finally time, realize. But you know how it is. I hear I've you. known this man a long time, him and his dad Bo. Well, congratulations, man. Thank you. A lot you. of folks rooting for hey, you I'm back I'm going to say one thing. This man right here, wouldn't been for him, I wouldn't have been calm to get down here, buddy. He's kept me calm for two days. And, let's, could, hope it, and hey, let's hope he stays with you then. He told him and Yanny, he said, hey, one thing about you, if that dog ain't barking, you're talking about it, God. <laughs> I said, you got to love to be loved. And that's all we need to hear from Kurt tonight, for sure. Right. Thank you, guys. Y'all done a marvelous job up here. Good luck to you tomorrow night, Kurt. Thank you, Rick. Really. Appreciate it. Yep. There you go. One of our more colorful hunters on the circuit, <laughs> Kurt think, Allring. No doubt about it. I'll tell you what, I really appreciate guys like Kurt because, you know, he has the excitement. Say so he's 60 years old. Hey, I got a birthday coming up tomorrow. 60 years is young. Trust me, I'm knocking on that door and to see him so excited. But the other thing that, you know, is great to see with guys like Kurt, and a lot of people don't realize it, that a lot of these dogs are companion animals as well. They're not just a hunting dog. You heard Kurt say that his daughter participates and that dog, five years old, lives in the house. And obviously he loves that animal and, you know, had a good run. The only dog in that cast with positive points, right, Steve? Yeah, you know, he, he again, this is not the only cast that, that his, and, and if you talk, and if you heard what he said, I've hunted out at Kurt's. He's got great hunting. He hunted the Palmyra Zone, guided, and scored on one coon on, or you know, was able to advance through. There were low scores. And these dogs that have the ability to win these casts, when the conditions are not quite favorable in their, you know, in their favor, and they and they ha can produce that one raccoon that scored, uh, they have, you know, them dogs advance really, really far in this hunt. And, uh, you know, uh, to a little bit to your point on Kurt, uh, I know, you know, Kurt um, personally, and uh, I, I'd hate to. I'd I'd be willing to say that nobody takes care of, of dogs any better than he does. And you know these dogs are a part of their family. And, yeah. Uh, how cool is it uh, to be able to share these hunts with your granddaughter? Oh uh, no, you, you, know, you gotta love that's, that. That's 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 what draws uh, today for me. That's you know we've seen it tonight on some young handlers here. We had a uh, we had a handler tonight that was handling a dog that advanced here. Uh, 
12 or 13 years old, you know, and, uh, you know, it was the same way with the TOC, we had a 13 year old handler. And uh, it's just, it's so awesome to be able to see that part of it, you know. Sure, you know, and, and two things before we move to the next dog that comes to the bench. You know, the thing that I love is the sportsmanship you see here. Kurt, obviously family guy, loves his dog in the house, but he made it a point to point out that, you know, his competitors, on a tough night, it's hard to keep your composure, guys. We have all lot competed in dog events. There's a lot on the line, and he made it a point to point out that these guys, you know, all were trying, shining, being great sports, trying to give his dog the best shot that they possibly could. And obviously he's a, a true competitor and a good sportsman too. And then number two, um, just point out here, these guys, when they, all the guides here have worked really, really hard. I know some of these guys to provide the best areas that they possibly can, but on any given night, you don't know what's gonna happen in that area. To keep the playing field level and fair, th these hunters in these casts, they don't get to pick and choose where they go. Hometown guys like Corey Jeffries, when Corey came for the cast call, he had no clue who his guide was going to be or where he was going, did he? No, it was all it's all a random draw. And actually, for, for the first time, uh, this host club did an amazing job. They actually drew all, they actually put the guides to all the casts before any of the dogs was ever drawn to the cast. And, the way the casts are drawn, the way that procedure works, is uh, when the hunters come to confirm their dog, they actually pick in a in a bucket or a, a box or whatever what cast they're going to get drawn to. So it's a total random draw. And to your point on the, you know, they only scored on one raccoon and you know, on this particular, you know, maybe guy that was guiding. Uh, I can guarantee you all of us, you know, that have hunted long enough, you could go back in there in another hour and hunt oh, yeah. a, two, a two hour hunt in there and tree four. Yeah, I mean that's just the way. That's the way the game moves. That's, or that's the way you know that raccoons and other wildlife moves around. And sure. so you know, it's just it's just the way you know. It's just kind of the what happens there. But you know, when there's only one there, uh, and, and there may have been a few others there, and they just didn't find it. You know. Yeah, no so, doubt about it. And, and that's not a reflection on the guide for no. sure. Please don't anyone uh, no. infer that that's what we're implying here. These no, guys, absolutely not. It's quite they've done the a wonderful contrary. job. I yeah. mean, they, I think I think tonight. <coughs> excuse me. I think tonight we've only had two dead casts, and uh, hey, Rick can attest to this a little bit. We have put, we've helped put on this world hunt in northern Indiana, in Ohio, areas that you know are bountiful with game, and had multiple dead casts come in. Sure, no doubt you know? about it. No, I'm and you know you don't know the dead cast. Uh, it may not be that they didn't score on a coon. Hey, we've had a, we don't know the situation on them. They could have treated a you know off game and all got scratched. I mean that's happened multiple times. So uh, there's you know there's there's obviously things on that. On no, that no doubt about it. And speaking of knowing the situation, I believe we've had a dog waiting on the bench for a pretty good while now. So Rick, this guy, uh, this guy, he's dying. I know to so get his time. He, he's an old pro now. We uh, <coughs> we may have to get you guys a throat lozenge or something over there. So we recognize this guy, don't we? Yes, we do. Here we are back again with uh, Logan Rose and Echo. Uh, Logan, congratulations on your win tonight. Tell me a little bit about your first round. Uh, it's kind of slow. I mean, uh, we only treated on or scored on three singles and uh, three different dogs on three different cones, and it was just nip and tuck coming right down to the wire. Are the, condi the conditions where you were at tonight? Was it uh, the trailing bad, the tracking bad? What what was going on there that kind of created the issue with it being slow? It was really dry. I mean, the ground was just really dry. Uh, dust everywhere. I mean, I'd imagine it's kind of hard for a dog to pick up a good scent or good run, run a good track. I mean, it was just, it was hard. I mean, they was bogging down and it was kind of hot too, down in the beans and things. So you, what zone did you go to to get here? Portland, zone three. And how did you do there? Uh, I won uh, the Friday night with 675 and then, uh, Saturday, I just had 300 and didn't win, but we still put on pretty good shit. 670, I think the cutoff was like 450 or something there at Portland, so you were in pretty good there with that 675. Um, tell us a little bit about his style and what, what, what makes him get to where he's at today. Uh, he just stays out of trouble more times than not. Uh, he'll be off by himself, usually a quarter and 125. Um, usually pretty good about having his cones. He just takes tracks as they come to him and Usually if he sticks his nose to a track, he's going to put an end to it somewhere right or wrong. But and his bloodline? He's off of my clover female and a dog called Knockout. Okay. So this is the same dog you placed 
and uh, you were in the semifinal round of the TOC last year. And uh, at, can you see any change? Is there any any improvement with the dog? Is he the same as he was back then, or what's the story on that? Uh, as long as he's getting treated pretty regular, he's looking pretty good. Yeah. If he goes on a running spell, I might as well stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you're telling me that you graduated from college in uh, in May. Yeah. And what were you studying? I've got a associate's degree in criminal justice. And your hometown? McKee, Kentucky. Okay. All right. Yeah, I knew you were close down there. Well, there you guys go. I mean, it's here we are back with Logan again, and uh, we'll see how far they go this weekend. Congratulations on your win, Logan. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow night. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Rick, and congratulations to Logan and Echo. Been watching this dog for a while at the TOCs. And uh, Rick, I need your help. I mean, Steve, I need your help here. Um, I'm looking at this score sheet. These guys had a drive. They went over to, uh, to Haywood County about an hour or so away from here. But I'm, I'm seeing that they uh, six raccoons seen, but only three scored. Any idea? Tell her, how can that happen? Yeah, I well, so what ends up happening when you're out there hunting, um, as you're walking from, you know, like this, you know, you hunt most of the time you hunt two hours in one woods. So probably more than likely what happened is they was walking from scoring one dog to go score another one. And uh, as you're doing that, you know, your light uh, is shining. So a lot of times you'll see other raccoons uh, setting up in a tree that the dogs just missed or didn't tree. And, or the, or the coon may have been, or the raccoon may be up in a tree, you know, for several hours, you know, right. just sleeping. So there's or, not a good hot track for it, the dog to for find. The dogs, yeah. Most Unless you have a really gone. good layup dog that, you know, and the wind is just right, you know, that can lay it up. Uh, there's a lot of times that you'll go in there. There's been nights that we've seen 10 raccoons set up and only tree two. And uh, them are the nights that you go home and you're sick to your stomach because you start <laughs> second guessing yourself. Man, what have I got here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how did I miss this yeah, opportunity? Yeah, you, know, yeah. you see 10 raccoons. And you, but no, it, ha it happens to all of us. And so as you can see, uh, they scored on three but seen, but seen six total. So, you know, again, we see, we've actually, and, and you bring up a good point because we've seen that actually on the card a lot where they've seen more than what they've actually treated. But that's usually what it is. And it seems to me like tonight, just watching a lot of these casts, it seems like the game is kind of laid up a little bit, you know. Uh, there's some casts that scored on five, but the ones that have been scoring on five, you know, we've been seeing that three dogs have been each tree and one, and one maybe trees two and that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, hey, I tell you, he was in the top six of the TOC, uh, 19 years old. Um, you know, he's got a good dog, obviously, because, you know, he had, he won a lot of cash to get there. Yeah. Uh, and it, as we recall, because we did the TOC, that cast was a very competitive cast on his heads-up cast that he got beat. He could have very easily advanced to the final cast. And uh, I look for him to make a run here. Yeah, know? and, I mean, this is a young dog we're talking about, too. You know, you look at consistency. Consistency is what takes you to the winner's circle time after time and, and to finish in that top six of the TOC to advance to what will be the top 24, 24 the world. since we had Amazing two dead Amazing accomplishment casts. in the same year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Amazing. And, and the young man's done a great job, too. Yep. And, and uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, obviously the rest of them that got beyond that aren't here. Mm -hmm. You know, so that just tells you. And they, they may have not competed in it either, you know. Sure. But that's a... a Obviously, an amazing accomplishment for sure. And really like to see a young guy like Logan, you know, so immersed in the sport, having success. I'm sure that Logan, we're going to see Logan Rose's name up here in the qualifiers and make it to all the major events for the next several years. I certainly hope so. Logan shared two things with me at the TUC that really stuck out to me. He, had, he has some really good mentors in life. And uh, he comes from an area where he's surrounded by some really good dog men. And he's turning into a really good dog man because he's following what the mentors shared with him to do. And, you know, uh, if you're a young hunter out there and uh, you want to advance yourself in this sport, get you a good mentor or two because it will pay off just like it's paying off for Logan. Yeah. You know, he's got good people around him, surrounded around him, and he's hunting. Right. And, uh, you know, it, and it's showing. It's, it's making a difference. Hey, Amen. Well, congratulations again, Logan. So glad to see him make it forward. And we've got another one that's made it. Uh, Rick, who do we got here? Well, we've got the cast winner of uh, cast five here with us. And uh, blue tick female, two years old, William Sally Gooden, owned and handled by Tom Williams, Ava, Missouri. Tom, tell us a little bit about your cast this evening. It started out kind of slow and the trailing was tough. And 
and uh, she ended up getting by herself a couple of times with coon and that's what did it so, so you scored on two coons with her by herself yeah and you're saying it's dry out there a lot a lot of the guys dry. are telling me that it's dry it was dry Mm -hmm. Okay, and you went to the uh, Palmyra zone? Went to the Palmyra zone. One. Tell us a little bit about that. It was good hunting, uh, but it, it was even dry there. The first night seemed a little rough for us, and I, I won both nights there, but um, it was just low scores, and, and coon weren't moving good, and it uh, worked out for me, I guess. But treed uh, two coon the first night and one coon the second night, seen anyways. So she's a little lighter colored blue tick. Yeah, she is. Tell us a little bit about her bloodline. She's basically all Lonnie Uchman blood, as much as you can get. Um, that's what she's going to be. So that's that's what it is. Yeah, I uh, I'm familiar with all them guys out there. Yeah. They uh, they had a real powerhouse group of dogs out there at one time. Yeah, yeah. They, Lonnie still got some good ones, and I hunt with him quite a bit. And that's it. This it just works for us where we live. So so tell us a little bit about her style. Uh, she's pretty, you know, she's not real fancy. She just goes and gets struck and gets treed and kind of stays to herself. So, and pretty good about having a coon, uh, on a strike dog, nothing, nothing too special. Just, just does her thing and, and usually will have a coon, which, and, and lonely. So it makes her competitive, you know. So she's just two years old, according to my paperwork. Yep, just two year old. Um, how long have you had her? I raised her from a pup. Okay. All right. So you know everything, the ins and outs about her? pretty well yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah so far yeah well yeah. congratulations thank on you. your win thank you Appreciate you made it to the top 24 what's your strategy for tomorrow night i just call my dog yeah i'm just gonna call her so whatever she does what she does all right pal. good all luck right. to you. you have a good night uh -huh. there you go guys another what do we want to off breed burke older would call that an off breed you know why does he want to hate? I mean, that's just rude to be. <laughs> well, he's a walker guy. I mean, you got to expect it from them guys. You know, they take they take thirty to a hunt and win with four of them, and they've won and they've won something. And big. We, we take four to a hunt and win with two of them, and it's not a big deal. You know what I mean? Amen. You <laughs> no, know, absolutely. You know, hey. I can tell you, you know, that dog's background breeding, them guys have been at it a long time. And if you're looking on this card here, uh, they scored on two raccoons, and she treed both of them. Amen. And, and here's the other thing. You know, looking on this card, he knows his dog. I mean, he pointed out, I'm looking at this card. She, not only, she scored on three. All were first. All were singles. There's no one that came in and scored behind her on those two. I, no, we've got a two circle 125s. And that's yeah, it. No, There's she, nobody she, that yeah, was behind her on yeah, that no, circle. She was by herself. And, yeah. and, and, and she made three trees and, and had two raccoons and a circle tree in the end uh, that he didn't need because the rest of them either was circled up or, or minus, you know. Yeah. He yeah, the only the dog with positive were points. Kind of tough out there, and she's two years old, and 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 still pulled that out like that. That's yeah, for a two-year-old. Yeah. You know, a two-year-old, uh, a two-year-old to come in there and tree the only two uh, that you see with the conditions. And hey, but you know, uh, knowing that bloodline, what's behind her or whatever, it doesn't surprise me. So I spent a, a year out there in Missouri in my. Maybe my high school year. Out there or in Missouri, like, like that's a long way yeah, away. Well, it was a long way. It's like. 30, 20 a minutes from, us from where, where I was, right <laughs> and I uh, I hunted with them Uchman guys quite a bit, and uh, top top dogs they had uh, back in the day, and uh, he's apparently he's still hunting with Lonnie. I didn't know Lonnie was even still hunting, but yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good testament to that bloodline right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yeah, you know, he seemed very excited about being here as as well tonight, coming in, and you know, the dog hunts by himself. Got a lot of faith in that dog. Very, very confident uh, about it. Now, I feel good about this dog. We're in an area where we've got a lot of raccoons, a dog that can work independent like that. I think she's got a really good chance. Oh, yeah. the, the one thing that concerns me about Sally Gooden moving forward is this first column here. You know, she's quick to get treed, but she's not quick. Low-end strike dog. Yeah. And, you know, there, you know uh, again, as the weekend moves forward uh you know it, it's happened i mean we obviously heard that the jane female uh you know several years ago uh one was the youngest to win the world hunt and then repeated the following year she was very special after that it's mostly dogs that are older and they're seasoned you know yeah. they're seasoned and with you know with the conditions the way they are i don't think there's a lot of rain in the forecast i know it's supposed to stay cool 
Uh, you know, cool and that, dry through the rest through the rest of the hunt. And, and living here, I can tell you. I mean, I'm watering my garden right now every day. We haven't had any appreciable rain in eight to ten days here. And during that time, we also haven't had any humidity. So the moisture that's been out there in the ground, a lot of it is gone. You know, uh, absolutely dusty conditions. Uh, don't think that we've had to mow the yard in the last week and a half, which this time of year is amazing. So these dry conditions, it's not going to let up. It's going to continue. You know, and you talked about historic dogs and stuff. I don't know if we'll be able to get to it, but I think we've actually got some video and, and you know, a, a reel about some of the history of this and some of the dogs that Past world champions and that so forth. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Past world champions. Maybe we'll be able to get to that here in just a little bit. You know, uh, one one thing that sticks out to me that I think is pretty awesome, uh, and again, you know, we're we're just getting some of this in, and I'd love to have Rick join us over here uh, on some of this. He can even elaborate. Come on over, Rick. Yeah, he can even elaborate on some of this. But uh, you know, we talked we talked earlier last night. We just t uh, touched briefly uh, on you know sires here that had multiple dogs here, and yes. one of the things that stands out to me at this point, uh, the Cuz dog had three dogs in this hunt and all three of them made the top. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, I didn't notice that. That is impressive, guys. Yeah. I'm telling you, that is hard to do. That don't happen every year, uh, or very rare. And to have, you know, he, you know, he brought three of them here and all three of them advanced. Yeah. And, and that is very, very impressive. And how old is the Cuz Dog now? Well, he's, I don't think he's, um, I don't, is he I don't still know producing? I, I don't think he's, I think he died a, a year or so ago, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there's been a lot of cuz dogs have been winning, uh, yeah. you know, especially, you know, winning and quite a bit of money or whatever and making a dent. And I tell you, you know, looking at the, the three that he's got, he's got the cookie female, obviously. Um, she's one of the top favorites. Uh, the put him to sleep dog that Adam Campbell owns and that twisted sister female, uh, the young one that Ron Chapman owns. Uh, you know, all three of them out of cuz. So that's, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's pretty impressive considering um, from what I see, the rest of them. Uh, I believe is uh, all just have one that advanced through out of all the ones that have multiple ones. Now there's still some casts out. That part of it may change. Yeah. But uh, you know that's just one thing that I'm seeing through here that's pretty. Uh, that and and Rick, you know hunting in this world hunt when the conditions are a little drier, uh, that kind of thing. Share a little bit on maybe a handler strategy. You know we both know that you know trying to keep a clean slate is the epitome. Uh, you know, because when you start making mistakes and conditions, it's a lot of times you don't have the opportunity. And maybe you can share with the viewers the opportunity is a lot less on trying to come back from that because game's not moving. Yeah, when the game, when the game's not out there uh, and, and and moving around for you to to find, it makes it tough. And when you make an error and try to come back uh, within the two-hour time frame, it, it is it's really tough. Uh, slow and steady on a bad night beats uh, fast and furious a lot of the times. Um, and I, the, the thing about these guys, what these guys are dealing with, they didn't know what the conditions were when they come down here, most of them. And uh, so they don't realize that when they get out there, hey, you know, this might not be as good a night as we think it is, that, that we might have pumped it up to be because of, uh, of all the dust, all the dryness out there. And we're hearing that more and more as uh, some of the cast winners come in and tell us how their hunt went. So Yeah, and um, I'll tell you, I think that we've got another one coming up here. We've had a little bit of a dry run here, but uh, we've got a couple cast winners coming in here. So uh, I tell you, I love it. When Rick joins us here, we're going to let him move back over. Uh, looks like we've got a very excited young man also over here. So, Rick, who we got with us? Uh, well, I don't think we're quite ready yet. They're moving in. And, folks, we're coming to the tail end. Stick with us. We're going to wind it up here. I'm going to get some verification here in a second, but I think we've only got two or three dogs left to come in. Um, but So just stick with us. Looks like we're ready now. Rick, who we got here? Well, we got the winner of Cash 12, and it's uh, B&S Trailers Bad News Rowdy. He's a six-year-old Walker uh, English male, excuse me, and he's owned by Brandon Gaines. Uh, Brandon? Are you the owner handler then on this this weekend at least, huh? Uh, tell us a little bit about your hunt tonight. Well, we had a good hunt. I had a good cast of guys. Uh, we kind of had a little cadu with some dogs come into a tree after I'd already treed in. We was waiting. They was scoring lane. His dog was split, and 
I treed back behind him and I was sitting there waiting on the cast and had some dogs come in and uh, we end up, I had a question on the deal because they called timeout for interference and I went ahead and asked for a question. I wanted to go ahead and score my tree and everything and it turned out that when we come back that they went in my favor because I was already treated in for before the interference occurred. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, tell us the number of coons you guys scored on out there. Uh, me and Lane was the only two that scored on a coon. I okay. Treated coon, Lane treated coon there at the end of the hunt. Uh, conditions were? Uh, we had good conditions. I mean, the hunting was good. We had good big bottoms, a lot of, a lot of room to run, but. I wish we could have got down on more water been the only thing I'd have liked. And it, and it seems like they're lacking a little water down here this weekend. Yeah. Everywhere I think's lacking water, really. I know back home, we're, we ain't had three-quarters of an inch. Range. And where is home? Oklahoma. Okay. So what zone did you go to to get here? Uh, zone four. Okay. And what did you do out there? Uh, Friday night, I didn't do no good. Uh, I'd been, I hadn't been hunting this dog hardly at all this year. Uh, I've been hunting a son out of him, and I drew out with a dog Friday night that sounded just like my young dog, and I just made some bad calls. Uh, hey, I was saying the wrong dog's name, to be honest with you. So Saturday night I said, I told my buddy that was handling my young dog for me, because I had him and his son in qualified. I asked my buddy, I said, well, won't you handle him and I'll handle Diesel. and. Uh, we went out and Timmy won, won his cast Saturday night with Rowdy, and uh, <coughs> I didn't do no good with Diesel uh, Saturday night. But uh, so you mentioned Timmy, but he didn't come down here for this weekend. Well, he had to he had to work. Uh, I asked him. I said, "Are you gonna be able to go?" Which he kind of told me he didn't think he was gonna get to when we went to zones, but he said. I don't know what you're going to do if we get both of them through. I said, well, I'll just have to find me another handler. Yeah, you worry about that when it happened. Yeah. So who we got here? This is Braxton Wheels. He hunts with me all the time. Uh, I was like, man, I don't want to go up here by myself. And Anyway, I was like, man, I don't want to ask none of my buddies to take off work come. And uh, I was like, I'll just call Braxton. We hunt together all the time. He knows my dog as good as I do. So if I really do need to put in somebody, he's the one to do it. I mean. He knows the rules. He hunts all these hunts, and he's been around with the big boys since he was little. Braxton, how old are you? 13 years old. 13, and that would be grade what? Eighth. Eighth grade. Okay. So he's got the confidence to turn it over to you if he needed to. Hopefully. <laughs> I hear you. Um, what's the bloodline on this dude? Easy. Uh, well, he's directly out of Rocky Run's Bad News Rowdy. Uh, or, Yeah. He, he's had enough of this interview. He, I can don't, tell you he don't. He don't like strangers too well. Uh, I ain't ever had anybody. Here, Braxton, you stand in front of me. We'll finish this up. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> somebody. And then he's out of one of my personal gyps, uh, and uh, uh, that I raised. It's out of uh, Woodmaster Stone Cold Joe and Doug Nestor's female trailer girl. All right. How's your nerves tonight? Oh, yeah. Nervous with him growling like <laughs> he's letting us know he's had enough. Yeah. Hey, let's call it an interview. All right, I appreciate you. Congratulations. Be back here tomorrow night, and you'll be in the uh, top 24, I believe we're saying. All right. Thanks, sir. Congratulations. Braxton, keep him under control there, buddy. Okay. I'll tell you what, Rick. I, I got out of there without any blood loss, didn't I? <laughs> well, that's because yeah. he's been talking. He, that dog's been hearing you talk about off breeds. I didn't even <laughs> mention it around him. I never mentioned it around him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah oh, you need awesome. to be careful about talking about those off breeds. It's liable to bite you. Pardon the pun. <laughs> Another tough condition cast. You know. Yeah, and you know. Yeah. <laughs> he shared a little bit. They had a little bit of a, a deal in the cast, and uh, obviously a question. They got it resolved when they got back here, and uh, you know they scored. Um, I believe they scored on two. Uh, by the way, the card looks. They looked at two raccoons, uh, but you know that uh, the question went his way, and and you know. We'll share a little bit on that. It can happen here. You know, like, you know, sometimes it's a matter of opinion or, you know, we're all human. We're in a sport that's human, you know, that we're all humans. And uh, sometimes calls are questioned and they have a format to take care of that. They obviously got it resolved and he's moving on. And, uh, you know, hey, uh, you know, you, you know, you can see he's confident. You know, he's a little nervous, but sure. confident. And again, 
uh, to a point that we had made. Uh, how awesome is it that he has this young man with him that comes up that gets to experience, even though he's a backup handler, gets to experience that side of this hunt. And I can tell you, uh, when they get to get a little taste of that, and as, as they get older or whatever, uh, them guys at a young age, they're, they're guys that me and Rick definitely don't want to draw at our age now because uh, they become seasoned and we're not, you know. Oh, yeah. So it was awesome seeing that, having that young man come up here with that, to that hunt with him. So absolutely. And, uh, you know, hey, two coons, hey, you know, they scored on multiple raccoons. That's all you can ask for. Hey, man, you know, and you love to see the future of the sport here with us tonight. And right now we're down to, I think, one dog left. About to come in from our last cast to come in tonight. But, you know, we took a little look at the future just then. Now we're going to take a look back at some of the past winners here of the United Kennel Club over these last 44 years of the World Coonhound Championship. So let's take a look.
Welcome back to the 2022 United Kennel Club World Coonhound Championship. Uh, sure, you've been with us for a while, but if not, I'm Jay Paul Jackson, your host here this evening. I got our expert analyst, uh, Steve Burkholder, here to my left. And just coming back over in to join us, too, is Mr. Rick Stretch. To let you guys know where we're at, we had 104 dogs that started tonight, and we're going to have 26 dogs ideally move on to round two here at the World Championship. However, uh, as happens, we've had a lot of game, but we have had been informed that there are two dead casts, so we're only going to have 24 there's, dogs. There's actually three dead casts, and, and so we're waiting on one cast to get back. They're five, ten minutes out. Awesome. Um, and we'll get to that. Um, they... Um, from our understanding, they are a live cast. I mean, so they'll have a score. You know, there'll be a, a score. You know, there'll be a score there. But we had three dead casts tonight. Now we don't know the on the particulars of that the cast why they was dead for. Uh, multiple things could have happened. Uh, I'm sure that uh, in time uh, that will be revealed. So as of right now, we should have 23 dogs moving on to tomorrow night, and that's exciting. Yeah, that's really exciting. You know, these guys and their chances are very good. Once you get to that 23, it's a huge hump to overcome. Uh, we're going to pare the field down in round two to our top seven dogs, hopefully, and then they'll be broken into three cast, two two dog cast, and one three dog cast. And the winner of those three casts will advance, I believe. So well, actually, what will happen with 23 dogs, because as we understand now, we right. believe there will be 23 dogs. So tomorrow night, uh, what they will do is they will actually go out in five four-dog casts, and there'll be a three-dog cast. So there'll be six casts total that go out. So uh, the seventh, the one three-dog cast that could have potentially been the Monite is all 26 would, or 25 of them would have had to come back in uh, as cast winners. That would have created that seventh cast. But as it is now, uh, which, is, uh, which is pretty typical for a world hunt, um, there's going to be 23 dogs, from what we understand, that is going to advance, which creates six casts. So they'll actually, tomorrow night on the late round, they'll actually be three heads up uh, round, you know, three heads up casts uh, that will be going out tomorrow night to, to hunt for the final three on Sunday. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Absolutely. Yep, cool. So then we're going to have, coming out of that, instead of, Six do instead of seven dogs, we'll have six dogs that will move on to the semifinals. Is that correct? Right. And so those will be three casts, two dogs apiece. Late tomorrow night, assuming we have plus point cast winners early, all of them, um, we'll have six dogs go back out In, late. I'm not sure on the formatting. I'm sure that Alan will share some on that. Uh, if, if there is a potential where they have five left over, uh, I do think there's some things uh, that they do to to get the final three, but I'm not sure on that. That's something that I'm sure Alan will share, uh, the you know from uh, field ops or, or Trevor on how that side of it works. But yeah. typically, that's the, what you want. Yeah. Yeah, and definitely we'll have three dogs coming back in the finals. Three dog finals. Yeah, the three dog finals. Yeah. That, ideally. That ideally. Yeah. Ideally, a three dog final. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, it, ideally we'd had 26 dogs move out at night. But we just ran through the past world champions from uh, from way back when to today. And um, I, I, I had to smile and think about all the ones that I got to go out there with. And some of those hunts were tough hunts, and some of them were not so tough. And uh, tonight we're seeing a, a hunt here that, uh, thank the good Lord, that the weather cooled down. If it would have stayed hot like it did yesterday, we might have we might have had a, a worse a result tonight than, than what we're seeing yeah and and that's determined by nature you know you know one thing that uh i was just going through so here i too. need to make a clarification here because it just had this slid to me and i'm not sure trying to figure out how this works but i've been informed that we're going to have six casts go out at some point with two dogs each which would be 12 dogs oh we're going to do it we're going to do uh six uh, tomorrow early round then we'll have six tw uh, two dog casts early that's what they're telling me we're going to have we're going to have six cast with two dogs. Now let's figure this so out. So we've got 23 that are going on after tonight. That's something that we'll get with uh, Alan on. I, I think it's, uh, well, well, we'll find some clarification on that because I'm not, it's six casts. it would be six casts. From what I understand, it'd be six casts uh, that will have, five of them will have four dogs oh. and one of them and will have three, three. Yeah. yeah, you said that. Six earlier. cast. Yeah. 
Yeah, what we said earlier. Yeah. yeah Five exactly. with four dogs, one with yeah, three. Exactly. Right. And from there, we'll drop down to six dogs that will go out and, and hunt heads three, up. Head, three, three heads, heads up, up cast. two dog yeah. cast. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. You know, well, we're, we're back to our three in the end. Three in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Something that just kind of an interesting thing, kind of summon the hunt up a little bit. Now, they're, this last cast coming back in could alter this a little bit, but I believe by, from what I was. This is really close. There was so there was thirty-eight to. I got to pick on Rick here a little bit. There was thirty-eight off-colored dogs, as per to say, that wasn't tree and walkers with sure. the other be, uh, breeds combined. Out of the one hundred and four, out of the one hundred and four, there's thirty-eight close that to was forty percent. Yeah. So and there's 35. eight of them that have advanced. So yeah. a third of the field, you know, and so the two thirds. So if you look at the percentage numbers, it's about the same. You know, it's about the same amount of percentage because there's you know you take. What is it, 64, 66? Out of the 66, you know, there's uh, obviously the other 16 or 13, 15 of them that advance are the walkers. I don't so. think we had a plot or a uh, leopard. No, we had so make, make, it, to leopard. The, yeah. make yeah. it to the final. Half leopard, leopard is through. Uh, yeah, 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 across. So, be a cross yeah. so, so there's there's one black and tan. There's three blue ticks that, so far that have advanced. Um, two English dogs. Um, and I believe uh, two ex-bred dogs, uh, and the rest of them are tree and walkers. So, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big field. I mean, it's a field that, uh, you know, it's an open field. What does it say about our pick'em contest that uh, the, I don't, the folks at home have picked three? Shows they know their dogs. They That's what it says dogs. about and it, yeah. I, but I, there was six dogs on the list, and I can't remember the six dogs. I wish we could pull Scar that back and, up. Scar uh, and Ivy. Yeah, Scar and Ivy. They and, went out. Uh, it, it was it uh, was a uh, bit of money, a little bit of money. Cooking. Apollo, Apollo, yeah, yeah, sundown. Yeah. And that's a ca that cast is still out. So, so they're the ones that are still out. That that yeah, that's the one that that's that's the the remaining cast that out is that particular cast. So, uh, you know that could be. But hey, still the top, you know, three of the top six most picked dogs are still in this thing. Uh, you know, and possibly but, four. And possibly we don't four. know that outcome. Yeah, we yet. don't we don't know that outcome uh, yet. So you know that, it, but even to get three out of the top six is pretty impressive. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty that's showing awesome. Showing the crowds paying attention. Yes, they are. Yeah, and uh, and and it's a it's a fun contest. You know, uh, I, I've I've you know played in it or you know picked them before or whatever, and. Uh, you know, at the TOC, we obviously did it. We enjoyed it, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be kind of nice tomorrow. A lot of it was us. my favorite part. I don't remember. Why. <laughs> I come right down to the wire if I remember it. Right. It did. A big, a, a big thick wire. Come right down to the wire. Uh, Absolutely. The, you know, I love this part of it, and we see the participation growing. And and you know, we, we talk about we know three of the six have made it through, possibly a fourth, but also the babe dog that. Yeah, didn't make it, we know for sure, was right there. I mean, second in her cast. Don't really remember where Ivy came in. No, I'm sorry, the babe dog didn't make Scar. Yeah, Scar. The Scar, Scar dog. Scar. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I didn't see Ivy's uh, name come across the table there, but I'm not sure where she came in. Yeah, I, I, I remember seeing the card come in, uh, but I don't, I, you know, obviously so many cards on there. So uh, I can, hey, let me share this. Uh, anything that Russ Beller owns at a world hunt is going to get picked because it's hard to keep him out. You know, it's just, it's just really is. You know, he had a dog in the final. He had a dog in the final three last year. Yeah. So it's just, uh, you know, um, and there was a young, I believe, a young girl by the name of Brooke. Is that right? Brooklyn. That, Brooklyn. Hunted uh, the night. Hunted, hunted, hunted the Ivy, Ivy yeah. female tonight. And she's been hunting it since I've known about the dog. Yeah. Uh, Brooklyn's been the one that's been hunting her. So, yep. uh, yeah, any time that, that they enter. They're they're a force. They're dangerous. Away. They're yeah. dangerous. That's that's yeah. a, that's a fact. So, you know, it's uh it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be an exciting rest of the weekend. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's gonna be an exciting rest of the weekend. The thing that you know I've noticed in doing this with you guys over the last several major events is, again, it's all about consistency. And and I think that you're seeing these dogs that do it week in and week out and you know they're the ones that you've really got to be scared of to make it here i mean i know the echo dog we've seen several times along the way right. of course sundown a little bit of money we've seen many times along the way and uh those dogs have all have something in common they're very consistent and it doesn't matter where they go they are a threat to win their cast no matter they, uh, what they can be swapped around a little bit too, and that and that's uh, that's a trait that that we all like. Uh, 
Yeah. Let's say you get one in and you can't go, but Steve knows what it sounds like, you know, and Steve's able to go. And we saw a little bit of that just up here tonight. I was surprised at the um, the number of stories that uh, this, this has happened in the last 30 days for them to prepare for this, and a couple of them within the last week. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the rest of us all try all year to get ready, <laughs> geared up for this thing, and here these guys are marching in here and, and getting in within the last two or three weeks of hunting the dog. And uh, that, that, uh, that throws out everything that we think about of preparation. Well, so that brings me, uh, as not a guy who is a participant here, really you know, loved coon hunt when I was younger, but never in the competition. How hard is it? I mean, I know you guys are both seasoned veterans. How hard is it to get a dog and acclimate to them over a short period of time? Because one of the things I notice is you'll see guys say, yeah, we just got him a couple months ago, and, you know, this is my fifth, sixth, seventh time out, but they're having some success. What are the keys to being successful with a new dog, I guess is what I'm asking. Each dog's different. Each guy they, is different. Yeah, They've it, you all know, got different personalities. I, I've always I've, I've shared this before. Two of the most dangerous combinations to beat is a is an older hound with a veteran handler that's had him for four or five years um, they're just not going to make a mistake the second thing is is you take a guy that's only been on a dog for a week or two because he has a he really is not out anything Any, every cast that he's in that he wins is just a bonus so he's loose you know what I mean? And you take a guy that's prepared the entire for three, four months or the entire year to get ready for this hunt, and it's all on the line that's got everything to lose, it, it's a lot of pressure. So, you know, them two scenarios, you know, a veteran hound, you know, a veteran hound with a veteran handler uh, that's been paired up for two or three years, they're, they're, you're not going to see a lot of minus come from them. Uh, and then, you know, obviously the loose handler that, you know, hey, hey, these guys are excited. You know, they're they're in the top 23, and if they don't win another cast of that dog in the next uh, six months, they've won their world hunt just getting in the top three, yeah. you know, 23, you know. Yeah. It's that um, big of a deal. Yeah. It's that big of a deal to get here. Um, you know, it, it, what a feather in their hat it is, you know. And then talk, uh, Steve's talking about the uh, handlers. Some dogs take forever. Some dogs take weeks, m oh. months at a time to get used to. We, we get a dog from Arkansas up in Ohio, he's got to adjust to the terrain as well as adjust to the owner, the handler. Maybe they've switched dog foods. There's all kinds of factors that play into that. Yeah. And uh, some of them can flip a switch and just go right on. But I'm gonna stand here and tell you that the good ones probably take a little bit of time. Um, I can look back through the years there and think of some consistent hounds that I've hunted with, and they they were the same every time you turned them loose. Um, go back some years, you look at Gary Hearn with his stock of dogs. Oh, yeah. Gary and Dick, good Lord, they were the same every time you went hunting with them, um, but, but they beat you. Well, yeah. that goes back to what I was saying earlier, though. It seems that the common denominator of these top dogs is consistency. Right. Being oh. the same every time along the way. It takes a consistent. Now, it's you're going to occasionally at this world hunt, you're going to get that young dog that gets hot, that breezes through and gets to the final cast, or whatever. And once in a great while, I win it. But that consistency. Great, great while. Yeah, great, yeah. great while. I mean, I to my mind and to my knowledge, uh, I believe that you know they talked about it earlier tonight on when um, Jane Jane won it and then come back the second year. But you know. Jane was a special with a hunt with a different, with a owner, different, different, different owner, different handler, and you know to, that. And that brings up another good point. You know, dogs do get. You know, sometimes do change ownership for whatever reason, and uh, a lot of owners are figuring out now the best thing to do uh, is bring that guy, that the handler, with that dog uh, that's got that dog to that point right. because that's with I, the I, one I, that brought him there. Because I can tell you uh, from we're seeing it now uh, a lot is when they switch handlers, there's a lot of dogs that did a lot of winning that all of a sudden, three or four months later, uh, are not the same dog as what they was because simply they just can't adjust to it. You know, uh, it, it's kind of like raising, you know, children, I guess. You know, every child is different, and, and dogs are all different. And so what a lot of guys do is they get one really good dog, and 
what worked for that one in their mind, especially someone young. I, I made the same mistake. I my first really good dog when I got my second. Well, after I got my first good dog and did quite a bit of winning with him, uh, well, I I knew how to train all the rest of them because I trained him. Well, guess what? It was several, it was several same, after they? that. They don't. Yeah. And yeah. and and it was several after that before finally you know and obviously some mentorship from some really good guys that realize that every hound is different. And what makes one, uh, one tick is not necessarily going to make the next one tick. And if you take that philosophy and try to impose something on a dog, on a hound, uh, that's not going to work for them. Uh, they just they just don't perform to their level. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Whenever we were doing the interviews over here on the bench, I think we only saw it one time where we've got a different handler at the finals than we did at the zone. Yeah. And that was the friendly red tick dog that was, yeah. we just interviewed there. Um, the one that and, loved you so very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't realize I was antagonizing. <laughs> Good Lord. Um, but uh, you don't see that. You very don't. Rare. You, I, I don't care who you are. There's still that factor of luck. And whatever got you to this point, whatever a little bit of luck got you to this point, you hang on to that luck. And whether it's the handler, uh, whether it's the vehicle, whether it's the whatever it might be. I've seen guys wear the same shirt for six rounds in a row and never even put it in the washer, you know what I mean? I was afraid you were going to say same underwear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, probably that too, but no. Uh, I know when, uh, I know when uh, uh, a, real, a good friend of ours, Rick, know, or Rick knows him well, when Mike Parrish won the World Hunt with Gap. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> He was he was probably one of the worst on Superstition. I mean, it, it was he had to sit in the same place in the truck. It had to be everything perfect. Yeah. And I mean, he was like freaked out about it, you know. And uh, but that's the thing about these hunts that you get to know these guys and, and these dogs. And hey, do some dogs are are the same way. I mean, the way you get them ready, put them in a box, tie them out. You don't tie them out, that kind of thing. And it just you know finding that that sweet spot. You know, I, I think as a, as a dog trainer myself. I think that the last thing you said is probably even more critical sometimes, and that is, you know, being consistent with the dog. I know that I've had a lot of dogs that, you know, dogs are creatures of habit, and, and I personally think that that is just as important for a handler to recognize, too, that you can screw that dog up by changing the routine. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Badly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And, and that's the first thing some guys want to do is uh, – when they get a new dog that they're going to be hunting, that they think they're going to hunt for a while, they want to make adjustments to them. And uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it backfires bad on them. I think the worst thing that you can definitely do as a trainer is bring a dog in and say, okay, I don't disregard that dog's history, what that dog's used to, and say, okay, I'm going to, we're going to do it my way. Right. The dog's been winning the other way. If it ain't broke, don't right. fix it. Right. But yeah. I think, but I've had several hounds in my hands that other people have won with, and I'm I'm not going to change them. I tried it back when I was younger, and if you if you just can't win with them, you need to let them go back to where they come from or or move them on. It, trying to retrain one that's been trained and and has been a consistent winner. Uh, it just don't hardly ever work. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to tell my wife that, honey, you can't retrain me, okay? Hill dogs don't well, learn new tricks yeah, very well. Well, well. well, to your point on, on what you said on, on that side of the, uh, you know, of, uh, of taking that dog, it, it's kind of like you take, you know, someone that's raised in a home, 18 or 20 years old, and, and it has a routine or things that they do, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're going to go into a 20-year-old. That's, you know, that's, you know, and I know we're using the, the, the same analogy, sure. but it works. You're not going to take a, you can take a three-year-old dog, and here's what you can do with it, in my opinion, is, you know, that dog's already what he's going to be, but you can work with him and eliminate a few of the mistakes and exemplify what he's good at, but to change the whole make of the dog, I mean, if you had a dog that you normally cut down fence rows and tree layups or whatever, and you're going to take this dog that's a trailing dog, and you're going to turn him into a layup dog, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Because of the ability, I mean, they're obviously finding that dog's strong point and what he's strong at, and then putting him in them situations to excel in that. That's what you can change in him. You, but you're not going to change the makeup of, you know, if he's an open trailing dog or if he's a, you know, blow through the world bush whacking style of dog, that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, and that is really something that I've noticed with these guys coming up. I mean, obviously, I talk to Corey Jeffries a lot, you know, and he talks about his dog getting on the tree really, really fast. You know, several of these guys 
know their dogs really well and, and they're very successful because it's obvious they pr play to their dog's strengths, you know, as well. And, and we heard a handler earlier that came back and prevailed in his cast, but took zero points because he waited too long. And remember that? Yeah, yeah, in declaring yeah. that dog treat. And he said, I know my dog better than that. I was thinking, yeah. you know, yeah. should have trusted, you know, and that, that's a big, big part of this, I believe. It's a knowing team your effort. Dog. Amen. It is a team effort. And, and uh, when, when both of you are on your game, it's easy. Yeah. But when one of you is not, the other one needs to step it up. And it can be either the handler or the dog. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've seen good dogs pull bad handlers right through an event. Mm -hmm. And we've seen good handlers pull bad dogs through an event. When you, when you, when when they have a bad night, I'll say, mm -hmm. um, it, 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 so many people don't realize that how much teamwork there really yeah. is. It's just, it ain't no different than being on a basketball team or a baseball team or whatever else. You've got to know the ins and outs of your partner, mm -hmm. and in this it, case, your partner is your dog. It's like. You can have the greatest quarterback in the world, but if he ain't got an offensive line to protect him, he ain't going to be a great yeah. quarterback very long. Yep. Yep. You know, and uh, and it's a, it's definitely the Rick's point. It's definitely a team effort. You know, it, it has. You know, uh, you know, and that's why I say, you know, these guys that you know, we, we've noticed that tonight a couple of them, you know, have only been on the dog for two or three weeks. You know, and Dave could very easily win this thing, but right. it's pretty hard. It's pretty tough to to string together six. That's a pretty things. remarkable thing when a guy yeah. that's only had the dog for two and three weeks at this level yeah. comes in and, and prevails in the end. You know, one of the things that I've seen personally is the amount of strategy that these guys use. Also, and, and if you're going to be a strategist, you better dang well know that dog. Yeah. So you know, when you're talking about bringing it all together as a team. You know, you got to know your dog. You've got to play that strategy. You've got to not make mistakes as a handler. And then if you're lucky, you've got a teammate. You know, as our young man said earlier, hey, I, I made a bad call, but, you know, dog took me through it, and here we are. And, and most of the time, most of the time when that's going to show up, and I think Rick can elaborate on this a little bit as well, most of the time when that's going to show up is when you're getting down to the nitty-gritty and it's a really tight cast and you have to make a split decision call. And then you better know, you better know, because the worst, the worst sinking feeling in this world, in, the, in this hunt right now, mm. is when at the end of the hunt, you know, when you make a call and you could have kept your mouth shut and was still advanced. Yeah. And we've all done it, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, force them to, to tree a raccoon to beat you, uh, knowing, knowing you're a hound, you know. And a lot of times, that's when that comes into play. You know. How much of an advantage do you think uh, Corey has got with his black and tan, I'm going to call him a pup, he's two years old, yeah. and he's sleeping in his own kennel tonight, oh. and uh, everything, everything's just routine for yeah. that dog. It's like he's not even left the house. What kind of advantage, Steve, do you think? I know what I think, but... Well, I know for me, uh, the year that I uh, placed in the Final Four in 2000 was in Columbia City, Indiana, an hour from my house. There you go. And uh, I got to go home every night, except for the last night. I didn't en end up going home, uh, but for, you know, either way. But it, everything was routine that whole week. I mean, I was just going to another local hunt, you know, and it, it was, a, I felt like it was a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, what wasn't, a, what wasn't an advantage for me was the fact that I had a lot of hometown crowd there, and that pressure was that pressure was tough. You know what yeah. I mean? You can that, get some big distractions oh yeah. right here. You know, and I feel for Corey too because it's a double-edged sword. Well, like he just said, you know, like I said, you know, he's got the hometown, and and in his mind, he's thinking, hey, how many, you know, how, you know, how many more chances am I going to get? Because he obviously didn't get through the zones right here. He had to go somewhere else uh, to get through the zones. City, maybe? maybe that was our closest one. I'm I don't know. I don't know where he went to the zone to get through. But you know, so he had to go there away from home to get there. And now to have it here and that opportunity, you know, for me, that happened in 2000 for me. And it never come along after that. Yeah. You know. And, and you know, being the hometown favorite, 
And, and we've got other guys from the area. Corey's the only one that comes to mind that I really know that, that's here and obviously now made it into the Well, you know, Ron, Ron's in Indian Mountain, Tennessee. What's that from here? An hour or two, probably yeah, two yeah, hours? Yeah, two probably. hours yeah. from here, probably. So. But, you know, Corey is also very, very active with the local organization, and he Which was awesome. instrumental in bringing this here and has been participating. So, you know, he's had time when I'm sure he would have liked to have been hunting that he's actually been working on the event, too. So just because, you know, and I've seen that happen. I mean, we had a Super Retriever Series uh, championship here several years ago, and I worked very hard to help bring that uh, to Dyersburg here. And, and I didn't do very well on my home turf at all, you know, because of my, and, and then the other thing that can hurt you, uh, the, the where most of my dogs went out, we had the misfortune of running on one of the grounds that I train on. And so, you know, the judges set up something that was very, very different. And so, you can have, that can work against you too. You know, and, and I realize the two games are different, but in everything, when you're talking about these animals, there, there are all kinds of variables that come to play for these dog guys. And, and you know, so not necessarily are we going to see the best, but we certainly wish the best for my hometown favorite, Corey. And, and speaking of the best, man, we've made it finally to the end. You see the camera shot there. We've moved over to the bench. We're about to throw it over uh, to Rick because the dog that we've been waiting for, I would say the beer dog, but <laughs> the dog we've been waiting for, yeah, uh, it's here. So, Rick, let, let's see who our final cast winner is. Well, here you go, um, cast 15. A four-year-old blue tick female, Northern Creek Blue Queen, owned by Derek Bryan and handled by Derek and Matt Lingo. And, uh, well, Derek, tell us a little bit about your first round tonight. Uh, turned loose, Walker female strikes for 100, Queen strikes for 75. Uh, they make a couple trees. She's still beating around on the track. It was probably ran last week. Uh, finally, finally get her picked up on the garment. I think she was six tenths. Go score Apollo, he's got a coon. Walk back into hearing distance of her, get her treat in. She's got a coon for 200. Recut, she makes another tree and it had millions of vines in it. We couldn't find nothing in it. And then scored two more circle trees on them other dogs and then Apollo got treated at the end of the hunt. And had a good, had a real good cast. Yeah, how many coons did you score on total then? Two? Two. Okay. Yep. All right, and you got, which zone did you guys go to then to get here? Which what? Zone. Uh, two, yeah. Portland. Portland? Three. Or zone three. Okay. And um, what kind of scores did you have there? Did you win your cast one or two nights? Uh, Friday night, I had 375. We scored on six coons, but they were all spleased. Dog tree two. And then Saturday night, she didn't look too good. We didn't do no good Saturday. Okay. All right. And Matt, I see you're the co-owner of this dog. I am. What's the uh, breeding on this dog here? So she's off of uh, Big Country and then uh, Larry Harvey's female. What's her name? Honey. Der Honey. Off Larry Harvey's honey female. Okay. All right. And you guys have had her for how long? You've had her for... Uh, since March. Since March. And then we just recently bought uh, Larry's half uh, maybe a week ago, two, two weeks, ago. weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've been seeing a lot of that this yeah. evening. We've uh, a couple of hounds swapped hands here in the last few days. And uh, and here you are at the big dance. Tell me a little bit about her style. Uh, she needs to be a thick coon to operate. Uh, I mean, she hunts around you. She hunts like a squirrel dog, I think. Uh, she's all over the board on strike, but she's going to be by herself always. Lots of energy? Always, yes, hyper, very. Yeah. Um, so here you are. And your age? 21. What's it feel like to get this close? Uh, I've been I've been sick to my stomach, nervous the whole week. Just thinking about coming down here, absolutely. The whole week? Yep. At Dang. work, at home, everything, yep. Now you know this guy behind you, he's not sick in his stomach, so... Are we going to turn it over to him at some point, or are you going to ride it all the way through? I just pointed at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually have my best friend's wedding Saturday, and if I do end up getting into the late round tomorrow, it's going over to him, and I'm shooting her home. Here we are. We just got done talking about this and uh, make, making some changes here later on this weekend, maybe. Yep. Congratulations hey, on your win. You. Appreciate you coming out. Thanks Matt, good luck to you yep. guys. Thank you. See you. And that wraps it up over here. We uh, That's our last one. All right, guys. Well, you just heard the man, Rick. I'll tell you, Rick Stretch has done a wonderful job here tonight, hadn't he, Steve, bringing it as these guys come in. We've had 23 dogs that are going to advance, and he's been able to interview all of them. And if and that dog makes the final round, 
On They're your, changing handles hand after what we just in. talked about. Yeah. And hunt the dog. Well, I tell you what I'm most excited about. Uh, that's another off-color dog, so that percentage went up to. I didn't even look. I didn't even notice. <laughs> notice. Man, that percentage and, and is tell going you, I tell dramatically. You something else. I tell you something else. Uh, that puts the out of you know we had four or five males here that had multiple pups, and that puts uh, that puts big country has two of them now the the babe female obviously and now the queen female. And guys, I can tell you this: uh, I hunted with Larry when the queen female started as a puppy, as a young dog. And actually had her at my house for probably four or five months, uh, hunted her a lot. Uh, she's an action-packed little female. And, uh, you know, she obviously won a cast tonight, again, where they only scored on a couple coons. She, you know, she treated a coon, uh, another dog treated a coon. And, uh, you know, they, she ended up having, uh, you know, she ended up having the tiebreaker. Yeah. And, she stayed uh, clean, looks like. She uh, stayed clean with yeah. temper points. Yeah. Kept her points, stayed, stayed, yep, yep. stayed clean, and that's the kind of female she is. And she just, you know, she just hunts in and around that and, and trees them raccoons. So it's, uh, you know, hey, kudos to them. It's exciting. Uh, I think they got as good a shot as anyone. I'll tell you what, and talk about exciting. I mean, we have had a very, very exciting night. It has been absolutely midnight mayhem here, but really enjoyed it uh, along with Steve Burkholder. Rig stretch. We've had a good time. So to give you a little bit of a recap tonight, uh, we went through our first round here. We had 104 dogs that came in here to the UKC, the 44th annual UKC World Coonhound Championship. Of those 104, out of a possible 26 to advance, we had 23 advance. So here's what's about to happen. Tomorrow night, we're going to start out round two. Now, because we've only got 23 dogs instead of 26, we're going to have Six dogs advanced to round three. We'll start tomorrow night with the 23 dogs in a total of six casts. Five of those casts will have four dogs for 20, and then the six casts will have three. Right. Assuming that we have a dog get positive points in all six casts, uh, we will have six dogs come back. In the semifinal. In the semifinal right. third round. Right. And they, those dogs will run head to head. So we'll have three casts that go out in the semifinals with two dogs each. If all three dogs, we in all three of those casts, we have a uh, positive dog, then we will, as planned, on Saturday night, come right back here for the final round. Three dogs, one cast, all going after all each other head-to-head -head for the 44th United Kennel Club World Coonhound Championship. So, you guys... Man, we've really enjoyed it tonight. Had a great time with you, Rick. Great time with you, Steve. We've you guys, drug it out. Uh, we've drug it out, but we've you guys are the experts. And we'll be coming back. So Saturday night, we will be right back here at the Dyersburg Dyer County Fairgrounds. We're going to start our live broadcast at about 8.30. It'll be the three of us back here. We're going to stick with you all the way through the finals. And at the end of it Saturday night, we will have a United Coon Club World Coonhound Champion. With that, I'm J. Paul Jackson, your host. For my buddy Steve Burkholder, Rick Stretch, we're out of here. See you Saturday night.